production. Here's Brooks reaching under, taking the snap, drifting back, short drops, going to throw, pass intercepted at the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. It's Ryan Taylor to the 5. He's in. Here's Craig, play fake. Damien in trouble, rolling to his left. Damien's going to set up, going to throw long again. Got Bailey out there. Bailey, he's got it this time at the 10. He's at the 5. He's gone. Touchdown, over. Miss, I, 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 I like to say that proud. I saw a lot of great things out today. I saw early adversity. Putting the worst situation out there. In offense, you, you, you kept trying, you kept pulling, you kept pulling, but defense, you kept us in that ball game. And everybody trying to find something to do. And I'm going to tell you, we proved something right there, because people are ready for us to lay down at the end. They're ready for us to quit the end. It ain't going to happen ever again. Okay. Yeah. Ready to get all the way. That's a great win. Let's get home and have a couple of days off. Let's go. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's go. the Auburn Football Review. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers open the season in Charlottesville, Virginia, with a big win over the University of Virginia in the land of Jefferson. Coach, it was a historic place and a pretty nice historic win for Auburn. Well, we knew it was going to be a difficult place to play and win a football game, and I'm so proud of the team. Came back, won a great game. We needed that good win to start the season, and now we can go on with trying to reach some of our goals. Senior football team has some uh, adversity starting out, but uh, keeps the cool and comes back and wins again. Well, I think that's where you saw the difference in the two teams. More experience on our team. Uh, we came in some bad situations. Four possessions in the first half, two of them inside the 10, two of them inside the 20, and yet we led 7-2 at halftime. Great early defense, composure maintained on offense, led to a great second half. And you have a lot of things to work on, but still, over, overall, it was a great opener. Great win. We could be, get much better. That's the exciting mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go into the dressing room now and talk to some of the players immediately after last night's 28-17 to 17 win. What made you believe you could go over the top on these guys? Coach Fisher. He's probably one of the best coaches on um, coach football. I mean, he's done a great job of game planning. Um, scouting these, they, they defense, and I spent a lot of hours in the um, film room, so everything was game plan, and we knew what was going to be there. We knew he was going to be open. It was just a matter of throwing the ball and catching it. On the first one that I dropped, I was too lack of a day school uh, because I thought it was just going to be a real easy catch, and I just took my eyes off it, and I just dropped it. And then coach told me to um, keep my head up, and he's going to come back and throw it to me, so I came back and just made some plays. Your three big plays in that first scoring drive really helped. Oh, yeah, whatever it takes to win. Like, I mean, that would just say whatever was necessary, and that's what we did. I was, I was just real nervous more than anything. Thing. And I mean, when I, when I saw Damien back there running with the ball, I asked him after the play was over, I asked him, you know, what was the problem? And he told me that he didn't get the ball and stuff. And then after that series, I went to the sideline and Coach Trigger told me, you know, to just calm down and stuff. And he said that the butterflies ought to be gone now. And I went back after, after that, you know, and I didn't have a problem with it. You're good at dropping in coverage and that's part of the job at that position, huh? Yes, sir. But um, that's not the only thing I have to do. I think I have to get better on the run right now. But I'm just ready to celebrate, feel good about the win, ready to take it on home. One and almost two. Yes, sir. Put some pressure on the uh, passer tonight. That was important. Uh, it felt good. He, he was very athletic, but I guess about five pounds small out of got to him. So they, all, they tried to get me down about 275, about 280. About five pounds small. I think I'd better get to him. But I was happy I got the pressures to call them bad, call them bad passes. We just, we knew we could control our own destiny, our own hands. So. It's just a matter of going out there and doing it and, and, and just coming together and just don't panic. Even when the offense can't score, we know it wasn't really their fault. We just had bad field position. So we just built out there, tried to create a couple of turnovers, and we did, and came out with a win. Basically, really a lovely place, and uh, I like the stadium. I like the... Uh, it, it was very traditional stadium for up in the Northeast. The weather was beautiful. It felt like a late fall afternoon, and... Uh, it was just one, it was a beautiful, the Tiger Walk again, people, we can't thank you enough for what you mean to our players, to have that many mm. people. Their, fan, their, their fans were amazed, just yeah. to have that many people at Tiger Walk. Our players feel like they're at home. Uh, we appreciate it so much, and, and, uh, and thank for your support. 
You are, you are right. The road Tiger Walk is really great. Now here we come. Everybody's excited. And again, we told them right before we came out there. Remember NC State Syracuse this year? Syracuse throws a fake pass for a touchdown first play. Adversity strikes. But it's going to be a 60-minute ball game, we told them. Sure enough, there's the snap. We worried about that. Brand new center. Did that a little bit. We didn't tell everybody. Did that a little bit of practice. And this and is the absolute worst thing that can happen to I just, you know, we act, I can't wait to see the videos. I haven't seen the film yet. And uh, to see uh, where the breakdown was. Hopefully that'll be a mistake that we can correct easily because you can't let that happen. But the defense comes in and holds on the first series. Well, we kicked, a good we, kickoff. Yeah, we kicked off from safety, yeah. but they returned it 40 yards. And now the defense is again uh, uh, put back down there in a bad situation. But you'll see what could have been a 9-0 lead. Uh, it's going to be changed here. Great pl pressure put on the quarterback there. That was their second possession and another good defensive stand. Yeah, we mixed, uh, we mixed blitzes up with zone coverage. You know, people say, well, why don't you get any pressure to the quarterback? Well, sometimes you put everybody in, in, uh, into coverage. But here's a tough drive. They get down this here. This is a third drive. And a critical play of the game. Line. Watch this pass. The receiver standing in his zone leans forward to catch the ball. The ball never crossed the plane of the goal line. I would have thought touchdown, but it's on the one. But they run the option. Look at there. That's, I mean, that's clearly a, a fumble, but they rule that a forward pass incomplete, and we would get it, or, a, or a, no, I guess the ball rolled across the, the line of scrimmage somewhere and got on a three instead of back up to the 11. But this is where the offense started to join in this game and what join a, in and play a part. What a big play right here on uh, third and four right here. There's Damien throwing to Fred. Great job. And put it out about, boy, that was a great play there. Fred, I tell you, is finding his role is going to be very big this year. Running, blocking, and catching did a fine job. You'll see it again. Here's Damien just comfortably scrambling outside. They put pressure. He finds there's a beautiful pass to Fred again. Fred finds the open slot. There it is. I tell you, the, the game, it was easily the, the, the style. They were going to place their, everybody up for the run, and people say, boy, the run just didn't work. And Third yeah, and but, seven. But it cost them the game. There's Hicks Poor. Get that first down. Don't do that. <laughs> Get that first down. We got the first down, but you don't want to dance. You got to know you're down and just the sticks. <laughs> Good run by Fred, nine-yard run. That was our longest run of the uh, night. Mm -hmm. But again, I think, again, the safety play up so close to top three. Right, number three right there is the safety. Because he's up there on runs, they got burned deep time and time again. Here's where the great individual talent is. It pays off. Damien takes it down, now we down and makes the first touchdown right there. Worried about his legs on that landing, scared you a little bit. But we've had almost no time with the ball. Defense has had to play the entire first half, and we're up seven to two. Now, they had a bad break on the goal line, but this was a really bad break for Oh, from Artavis makes a beautiful interception. We could have had four or five interceptions, maybe six, but we roughed the passer. A young uh, a mistake that we cannot have because that could have broken their backs right there. But this is a nine-play, 16-play, uh, 16 16-play, uh, 16 nine-minute nine drive. drive to end the half, and they get no points. But we never saw the ball. But the defense bent at the end, held back two big sacks, no field goal attempt. First and ten here. Beautiful job. This uh, Charles Dorsey coming in there and uh, Ricky Neal. And good, good, back. good pressure right there. And I think we'll come back with one more. Yeah, here's third and uh, long, and, and it takes them out of the field goal. That's right. That's right. And they let the clock run out here, and the fans didn't like that. Well, you know, they they, they probably felt they didn't have a mistake, but uh, it was looked like it was going to be too far to go out mm -hmm. there and, and get anything to win. So it was a second half game. But so far, we've faced adversity, continuing the first half. But winning 7-2, I saw some leadership and composure. It certainly was a team effort, defense and offense. And we'll be back in just a minute. This week. Well, you know, it was truly a team effort, but the difference maker was Damian Craig. He scrambled for one touchdown, threw for two more, and in a game that looked like it was going to be right down to the wire, he made the difference in the outcome of that game. And made a great run for a touchdown, too, that was sorely needed. So congratulations to Damian Craig, this week's Tiger of the Game. We'll be right back. Tiger of the Game, presented by J&M Bookstore. J&M, Auburn's Tiger of a Bookstore. Listen up, people. Range of Auburn information, services, and entertainment. The address is www.aunetwork.com. Now, if the first half was a little slow, just uh, fasten your seatbelt. Things are about to pick up as we move into the second half of Thursday night's game. A lot of action in the first couple of minutes. We take the opening kickoff of the second half. 21 points in two and a half minutes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Jared Holmes really helps that kickoff team Boy, uh, uh, by kicking, kicking it out of the end zone or yeah. back of the end zone. Here's the first play of the second half. Beautiful read. Eyes on the quarterback. Big interception. 
Boy, I'm telling you, play. now we're cooking, now we're cooking. Great defensive play. Just Who takes credit for moving Ryan to that outside linebacker <laughs> spot? That's, that's a genius. Yeah, that's coach. just, he, he does a great job dropping the covers from there. And now they come back, but here's the, and then when the defense gets back on the field now, because, again, we scored. And there'll be a big play here, just a busted coverage here. We got everything covered. Everything's covered. He comes back, finds we don't even have the guy covered. But somebody blew an assignment. It cost you right there. So many good plays. Good to see Antoine knowing they're fighting to catch him. Um, but they get the score, so it negates the interception. That was totally, that was a nothing-nothing deal. And again, if we can eliminate that. Now here comes the, drive, the next play, next series now, and we come right back. Start out with a good punt, uh, kickoff return here. By good job. I, uh, Danton is kind of concerned. I got to get him to go as fast as he can hit a seam, but he's good at that kind of stuff. And uh, get what you can, and he gets a great return on the ball, and now we've got good field position. We're going to go, we, we're going to attack what we saw in the first half hurting. There's a fake run. You finally had some field position to do some stuff. Well, we got outside, see the whole first and then Carson Bailey dropped one right in his hands. He was so shook up. I said, right now, I'm going right back to him. So I immediately called a play, a deep ball put in specially for them. And I knew it would come right back to him. Damien made it by made that guy miss. He makes the play and watch the throw on the run, the catch, concentration. And now instead of having a man that's lost confidence, you got a man that feels like he's winning the game for you. Beat Steve Phelan of Montgomery on that play, too. Well, it's a great, great throw and catch. And the defense is doing their job. Charles Dorsey, there's Ricky Neal. The entire front is doing a super job. And again, the defensive players on that team just played super. And the, and the staff had the players ready, not knowing what exactly they were going to play. Certainly. Almost got another one. Wow. Anybody that saw that game, we, had, we, we were doing such a good job keeping our eyes on the ball. Could have had four or five interceptions. And... And although we've got a long way to go, you got to play, please. Get a couple of first downs on the next drive, but it stalls. And uh, there's the screen. Good reading. Again. You know, a lot of times, what looks like just fanatical pursuit by a defense is really just keeping your eyes on the ball and doing the things you're supposed to do gets you to the ball quicker. Third and thirteen. Almost intercepts again. Again, uh, Jason Bray getting in the in the line of tra the line of uh, uh, the flight of the ball. And Charlie Dorsey pressuring. He had a, he had a good night. And here we come back. You'll see a beautiful pass to. Oh, that, you know what's great about this one? That's that All-American safety. It's 230 pounds. Goodson jumped right up. Yeah. Now, incidentally, we, we couldn't play him anymore because he had a mild concussion, but yeah. he got right up and walked off that field. And Only got turnover that ball. of the night. Right well, that was just a miscommunication. The quarterback had a guy rolling out. He stopped, and uh, but that was critical because we were right down there ready to finish, finish them off. Mm -hmm. Great coverage right there. Uh, third and nine coming. Secondary line. Right in the third. Here we got a critical play. This is the third and nine. There's the throw right there. Beautiful stop right there by Jason Bray. And now comes a fourth and ten, and you'll watch how close this one is. This is a big factor in the game, too. They're trying to catch up. They throw the ball, and you'll see right down here next to the stick. Goes out. There's the Just spot. Just short. Just short. And our defense holds again. Sincade Pennington in the game, now. Big Sincade got some good work lately. We were just looking. We, had, we, we have... You know, Sin Cade's about 190 pounds. He's short, so people think of a small tailback, but 190 is about what you what you can play with at that position. Starting the fourth quarter on third and 11. And again, the people people will wonder why they stopped the run. The reason they did because they gave the these passes up, and mm -hmm. that was the difference in the game. Mm -hmm. Boy, what a big score that was! 28 to nine now, and uh, they, they got to score to, three full yeah. touchdowns uh, um, to win the game, or two touchdowns and a field goal. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of scores when they haven't got but one. But there's a play where you cover perfectly and you can't cover a six foot four guy and a five foot nine guy. They did they they made the right call and the right play. Eleven behind, that's an, a touchdown and two and a field goal. So the game's on the line here. Well you gotta play. You know, it's again that, that they make a, the defense has to come forward. The offense gotta get some plays, but now you don't want to throw the ball too much. Now you don't want to go ahead. The defense has, has played very well. You don't want to put the ball in the air and get yourself in trouble. Here's the punt. We've got to get the punt off to finish the game because there's about 18 seconds left in the game. And no, one, this, is, this is their drive. Oh, right? this is, oh, that's right. This is the drive before that. That wasn't the very last punt, was it? Right here. Here's the drive that we have to stop them. They start with about three minutes, uh, three, 3.30 to go. That's right. And if they score this one, then we know we're going to get an onside kick. Right. We know we're going to get an onside kick if they can score in this drive. So this one becomes critical. And they were full, almost had the interception. Look at that. Right now, oh, we could have stopped that one right there. But great job, Antoine Nolan. Had the receiver covered. Now, we've got them down to a situation where there's not many chances left. This looks like the fourth down play right here. Good it's cover. Good coverage right there. He can't get it to him. And they have to give the ball back to us. And again, that's a tough place to play. We bring them down to our place. George Welch recognized one of the best coaches in the country. They're a fine football team. 
And uh, I'm proud that the players deserved it. I think it wasn't so much great play. We made so many mistakes, we can get better. But they wanted to win so badly, I could see it in their eyes. I'm proud for them. They're, 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 hopefully good you can tell it was a big win because it was for the reaction in the dressing room. Oh, just, yeah, they, 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 that's they something they've wanted. They've worked very hard. They want, they want special things to happen to them. We'll be back in just a minute. The advantage of a Thursday night game is, and an opening game too, is that you have an extra couple of days to uh, study and uh, repair and uh, then, then plan for the next opponent. Well, that's right. If, if Ole Miss will play the Saturday, uh, two days later, they've got less time. We can have our, our young men can get off and rest those weary legs, but we coaches have two days to prepare for them. Hopefully give us a little bit of jump, but it, it may not be big, but every little bit counts in games like this. And, and Ole Miss now becomes the biggest game on our schedule because we have made a vow that each game should be taken one at a time with no thought or discussion of one later in the schedule. Uh, we must point out this uh, show was taped earlier before the Ole Miss SMU game, but mm -hmm. we do know that they had a really, really big win against Central Florida winning in overtime. Well, again, that can be misleading, too, because Central Florida has one of the best quarterbacks right. in the country and will be a very talented team uh, in the upcoming years. And so Ole Miss came back, played a tough game, and won, and probably were getting ready for the second game a lot in their mind. And so, again, we know what we've got. Ole Miss has given us tough ball games year in and year out, and so what we've got to do is get, get as good as the better from the first game to the second game. We've got to make as much improvement as possible because that's the time that you do it because we can put a much better football team out there next week than we did this. I like the idea of the two days off for the team because we must remember they've been working three weeks plus a game week. And they've had a pretty rough go for that. Yeah, there's no, we don't have an off week again until all the way up to before the Georgia game. So we need the rest. We've got to be careful about how we wear these guys down for the end of the season. And but make sure we're ready to go each and every week this week against Ole Miss. Uh, now fans will be concerned about the running game. Mm -hmm. what, what, are you, what are your thoughts there? Well, you know, we've got to get, uh, have a good running game. But you got to remember, look at the Virginia game. Why did we win? Because they feared and wanted to stop our run so much, they put safeties very far inside with corners tight to the outside. Well, when we ran the receivers down and across the middle, those safeties could not stop the pass. So the very fact that Virginia overplayed the run and stopped the run cost them the ball game gave us deep balls that they could have. So our running game, in effect, caused them to overplay the run and give us the passes. You'd like the run to work anyway, but that was the difference in the ball game. We'll be back next to Sunday with Auburn Ole Miss. Hope you'll join us then on the Auburn Football Review. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by Gus Meyer, Brookwood Village, Birmingham. This has been the Auburn Football and we welcome you to Virginia football with head coach George Welsh. A difficult Thursday night in Scott Stadium, and it seems like years ago since that game was played. But, uh, boy, <laughs> Auburn brought a pretty good team to town, didn't they? Well, I knew they were coming in with a good football team. You know, you don't play in a Southeast Conference and win seven games in a regular season, eight up count in the uh, bowl game, and then return everybody. Right. I think part of their problem last year was their defense was so young and some of the guys were hurt. So I knew they were going to be better. I think our execution could have been better, though, and I think we made, we made too many mistakes, and that's where I blame myself in some ways. Maybe the preparations weren't quite good enough for a team like Auburn, mm -hmm. but it was a tough opener for this football team going through yeah. a big transition period. Yeah, it really was, and when it comes down to a game of inches, uh, you know, the fumble at the goal line, the block punt that well, should have been the touchdown, and of course, then a critical first down. I mean, it, it really was a game of inches. Game of inches, like it most, most of mm -hmm. the time they are when their teams are fairly evenly matched, and I, you know, I... I thought we were fairly evenly matched right. with Auburn, so I know if they're a good SEC team, I guess maybe we have a chance to be pretty good in the ACC. I don't know. We right. have to wait and see. All right, we're going to break down the Auburn game. It was the first home opening loss in 13 years for the Cavs. Terry Bob making his second return to Scott Stadium, this time as a coach, and we'll talk about that when we come back on Virginia football right after this. Yeah, and on top of that stat, the first team with a higher ranking uh, to win in six tries against the Cavs and a difficult home opener, as Coach said. And you had said it all summer. You, Auburn, you knew it was going to be a tough opener, yeah. and you wished it would have been a Central Michigan or a Richmond. Well, I, may, maybe the game will help us, like mm -hmm. some of these other games in, the, in our past that have we, we played a, uh, outstanding football teams, and uh, the tempo of the game mm -hmm. picks up. You can't simulate it in practice. But it would certainly would have been better for this team to to play somebody that, and of, of a lesser caliber and maybe at least for two or three weeks right. before we get into games like that. But this is the way it fell for us, so, you know. Well, it was a perfect night for football. Yeah, that, that was uh, a pretty good start for us. Damon Craig uh, bobbles the snap and the Cavs come after him. 
and all of a sudden, the, I mean, the crowd was in it immediately with that play, and Wally Rayner, of course, and Griffith, and uh, they get to Craig, and now uh, they're backed up, and here's the big play. Stoops, Stoops the block. got it, huh? That looks like that should be our ball, right? <laughs> well, see, I, I said it all along on the ESPN coverage, and I thought Wally Allegbe had his hands on it, and there was such a scrap for it that Bill Goss, the SEC referee, said, and we get another look at it, um, the SEC referee said that it was uh, definitely uh, uh, the punter, Jared Holmes, who goes down, but it looks like Allegbe had it. Boy, it sure does. If he has it right then, then it's it. That should have been it, but... <laughs> For, uh, for the Cavs, two drive stall inside the 40, and Thomas Jones, a uh, 21-yard return here and opening up things. And boy, the Cavs are just in business, Coach, in the first quarter. Well, we, yeah, we're in business, but we don't get touchdowns or even field goals. So that's, that's the bad part. And that, in games like this, that normally costs you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't necessarily have to if we hadn't given up some big plays on defense. Uh, but it normally costs you when you can't convert. This is the fullback Kirby and on a third down and yeah, I don't think we got that blocked. That that looked like a bad call, but that was uh, I don't think we got it blocked right. Wally Rayner with the tip there, he ended up with eight tackles on the night. And I thought Wally played pretty well. I think he did. He gave us he, he gave us a lot of emotion and he he's done a good you know, somebody played well on defense. They didn't have a lot of yards. Eleven yards to Jermaine Crowell, he had a pretty good night. A 2-0 Virginia lead. We're in the first. This is at the Auburn 38-yard line, and again, a drive stall, Coach. Well, we had those drives that were around the 35-yard line, and that's a little bit too far for me to kick a field goal, so mm -hmm. we punted it. I think the first couple punts in those situations worked out fine because we kept them backed up. And that one is incomplete on the ground, and I'm not sure that was the right call. <laughs> <laughs> that was good for us, but... So here's Thomas Jones, a little breathing room, and how would you rate his performance on his first night as a starter? I, I think he did well. I think there's some things with we, we got to do better with the backs in this passing game. I think he ran the ball well, and that's his fort, forte. So, uh, but overall, the back, you know, we got to get a little bit more out of them in the passing game, and that was a, uh, that was a good job there. Good execution for now 12. Now we're down to the four. We got first down on the four, I think, there. All right, we're going to look at this twice, Coach. We're going to see the pitch on the option. Uh, Thomas said that he saw the linebacker coming after him. and uh, 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 You know, he got to catch it anyway, but mm -hmm. that, that wasn't executed as well as we wanted to. I think he looked up at Tequila Spikes, number 55, right there. So now it's a 98-yard drive in 10 plays. It takes 551, and we're in the second quarter now, and Auburn just taking the clock away from Virginia. This one, this one, yeah, I don't know about this one. This is, yeah, this is the 35-yarder to the fullback, Fred Beasley. That's one of the one of the five mistakes that we made on on that drive. You know, that was a man-to-man -man coverage, and we lost, we let them go. Mm -hmm. Damian Craig went three for three in the drive. Auburn oh, only had run there, and I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure what happened on that breakdown, but. You know, I can see the quarterback getting outside, but you know, we got to tackle him for a five or ten yard gain and then make it hard for him to get in. Good catch there by Jermaine. Well, our passing stats were good and we threw a couple touchdown passes, but you know, we, we just got to be a little bit better. This, this one doesn't count. Right. This is Martavius Houston yeah. on the pick, but it didn't make any difference. A couple of cameramen go flying. We get to see the hit on this Aaron This is Brooks. a late hit. Watch number nine, 86. Yeah. yeah that's, Quentin that's Reese late. got him. Mm -hmm. So Virginia continues the drive. And this one to Sean Jones, 15 yards to pass play. I thought your receivers coach looked like they concentrated better. Um, I, I well, we've had our ups and downs in preseason, but uh, and we had some days in there when we dropped the ball, but uh, they played pretty well. You know, Wilkins is finally getting the feel of things, and you know, we, we expect a lot of things out of Jermaine. That was the sack before the half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right before the half, and I know you were quoted in the paper that, that you, bad. you didn't like the way that you handled the clock management. Uh, going no, we did not time. do a good job with the clock management, but I haven't, uh, we, I haven't looked into the details yet, but mm -hmm. there's, uh, I, when I looked at the tape, there was two minutes 
plus left on the clock and we only get three plays run. Yeah. Would you say that that's not something <laughs> wrong? Would, yeah, I would say that that's not the way. <laughs> I think something's wrong. <laughs> that, that's what surprised me. Mm -hmm. I looked at the clock once and see there was four minutes to go and then, you know, two plays later there's two, two something and then all of a sudden there's 20 seconds. Right. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Uh, I, I can't explain it, but we definitely should, after Brooks got sacked, we need to take a timeout then. Right. We, we let the clock run. Then we get the delay a game penalty, which is inexcusable in that situation. Well, Auburn comes up big in the second half. We'll take a look at that as we come back. Virginia football with George Welsh returns right after this. In the third quarter on uh, national TV. But the first play, not a good one. Aaron looking to the near side, and this is the interception that uh, makes it a 14-2 game and more or less turns the game around, I think. That hurt. Yeah, Ryan Taylor. You get the ball in the third quarter. You like to at least keep it for a while and get something out of it. The Cavs come back, Coach. What about this play in the... Well, they were, they were bump and run. Mm -hmm. And we crossed the receivers, and they lost, they lost the inside guy. Well, we get a chance to see it. It's a 77-yard drive in three plays, and get yeah. you right back in the well, game. Well, watch what happens here. Crowell Crock comes underneath, and, you know, 25 is playing different than the other guy, so he's coming up on the back, so I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing. Good for us, though. That's yeah. why you should never lose heart, you know? Right. The stands went quiet. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Karsten Bailey bomb. Stephen Phelan trying to make the play. This is a perfectly thrown ball right over his hand. Yeah, but, you know, we got to get him contained. You know, if you, you, you show the out... Well, that's not the same one. That's the hit by Poindexter on uh, Tyron Goodson. And he ended up going to the sidelines. And uh, I think we get a chance to see this again. The catch, boom. This is Phelan's interception to make well, we it. get the ball back. You know, we're still in the football game, but mm -hmm. things were down. You know, we, we didn't have the intensity level on the sidelines, and I got to make sure we get that picked up. And, you know, our stands went quiet. It's 21-9 going into the fourth quarter. All kinds of time. That's only right. two scores. Right. That's a 45-yard pass play to Jermaine Crowell, a big third down play here with Aaron Brooks. Fourth down play. This is the fourth down play, Coach. And this is the one that comes about half a football short. I think it was a bad mark. The ball goes out of bounds on the other side of the line, looks like to me, and then we get it, we get it on the... He falls. Ooh, that looks, from that angle, it looked like he fell right where the marker was. On the sideline. Well, I think, I think we, we, it, the, the ball, it's where the ball goes out of bounds and the ball was up further than that. I, I was right in front of that. Now, th this one I can't explain. I don't know what happened there. Carson Bailey, the catch again. It's a 77-yard pass, and it makes it. That's the one that really hurt. Right. Because they're back, you know, they're back in the on their own 30-yard line or wherever they were, and that's, you know, you get the ball back there. All right, this is the fourth and one call. Boy, what a, I love this call, Coach. Uh, I wasn't sure, because that kid, <laughs> you know why? Because the corner wasn't walked up on him. The corner was backed off. I didn't know how he was going to do that, but now, you know, Jermaine, maybe Jermaine can do more of that for us this year. His job is to get in front of the corner here? And, you know. No, his job, they're just gonna, he's going to get where he can, and they're going to throw it up. But I was, we were expecting you know, more man-to-man -man and bump and run or a mm -hmm. zone. And what, the corner was playing man-to-man, -man, but he was backed off. Right. I didn't see any way we are going to go down there and throw it up for him. And the thoughts are a two-point conversion. I mean, you're thinking, hey, a couple of scores, we get... You know, well, we're still in the game. We get the ball back. Because you get a second. The thing is, if you get a, if you get a, another two-pointer, and then you're within three points of time. That's right. the good thing about overtime. <laughs> but we, we couldn't get the job done. We weren't good enough. Now, six minutes to go. Your theory on not an onside kick there. You got still got plenty of time, right? Well, I first said onside kick. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was, a there was an 11-point difference. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, we can hold them kick it deep and hold them right. and maybe get a turnover or block a punt or something or get a punt run back and then we can get a touchdown and then even mm -hmm. if there's only a couple minutes left you got net now you onside kick right and then try and then you need a field goal to win okay we'll have more with coach uh, welsh as we roll on here virginia football with the head man we'll be back right after this so uh, we got a great feature coming up with brian owens and some other stuff on the show so stay with us we'll be right back One thing. The one thing. There's a lot of things. <laughs> I think that our, a lot of our individual players, especially the young players, have the potential to get 
better than they we showed last mm -hmm. night, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. Mm -hmm. and we have to improve week to week to week. And if we do that, the team will improve. And that's going to be the, you know, that's going to make the difference in which, because right. I think we're going to play a lot of close games. All right, good answer. Thanks for the question. And again, as Todd said, look for the camera home and away, and you could participate in the Reebok question of the week. I want to talk about Brian Owen. Todd Gadale has put together a good piece on this youngster, and a kid that kicked in high school. He walked on. You weren't sure if he was going to play, and he turns out to be quite a, uh, quite a story, really, for Virginia. Well, I know his high school coach. He's from my hometown, and I've known him for, you know, for a long time, mm -hmm. and we've been in the coaching fraternity for a long time. So, we, we've had some good Cedar Cliff walk-ons. Mm -hmm. Finkelstein's, an, Finkelstein's right. another one. Um, he just said he's a good kid, you know, and why don't you take a look at him? And he was a good student, so we did it. But when we found out, we had other kickers. Uh, maybe he could have kicked for us, but we had other kickers. And then we, when he could run. He runs pretty well. I said, hey, why don't you try wide out? Mm -hmm. So he, I think the last couple of years, he's finally learned how to play wide out. And he's got a uh, pretty good uh, pair of hands, and Todd Goodale spent some time with the Cavs, number 29. Wake up with two. Play fake, rolls out. They've got him in the end zone for a safety. Craig, with the play clock running down out of the eye formation, going to throw. Goodson has it inside the five. He's in there. Touchdown! Every day, every game, I'm telling you, we find out something about ourselves. Both games, we find out something more about ourselves. Defense, that's a great job. Defense, Will, you did a great job. Defense. <laughs> And, uh, and offense, you came back at the end when you had to and made plays. I'm proud of offense, they got it. <laughs> now, what we got to do, what we got to do offensively and defensively is just get that much better. Offensively, a catch on the five, maybe. A run, we got to get it. A, 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 a foolish penalty, a, a dumb mistake. You correct that. And this team, we got a whole lot further we can go. A whole lot further we can go. And let's commit ourselves, men. Because you know what? We've had two years we had to sit, sit and come home against LSU with no victory. We've had to sit and let them go home a winner. And I, I ain't resting this week. You're not resting this week. Let's, let's have a good time tonight. Let's have a good time tonight. And then, and then commit ourselves totally, totally as a team, whatever's necessary, to beat LSU. hair yesterday for the home opener and a big win over Ole Miss, 19-9. to 9. You had to like that strong finish, Coach well, that's, what, that's what we were looking for this year. You know, we wanted to end the third and fourth quarters positively, coming on, attacking people. Two games now, the third and fourth quarters have been ours, and so that's what we wanted to happen. Now we just got to add those first and se to second quarters to the offense. We ought to have us a pretty good team. It was quite a day, and we'll review that for you in a moment. Right now, though, let's go into the dressing room for some post-game comments. You know, we kept our heads up, we kept our poise, and that's the difference uh, um, between this year and last year. Last year, we probably wanted to be able to keep our poise in a game like this, and we did, and we won the football game. I saw you congratulate the defense when you came in. So it was, it was big time. They kept us in the game. Uh, they held them to field goals and not touchdowns and until the offense got going. We was moving the ball pretty well. I thought we just had a um, couple penalties, like you said, a couple drop balls. Besides that, I think we had a pretty good day. What happened down there on the goal line? Uh, got a little overexcited. It. I shouldn't have did that. Just waiting on him to make a big play. You know, I'm just, just really got overexcited. Well, you got a chance to redeem yourself pretty quick, though. Yeah, I got a chance to redeem myself pretty quick. They came up and pressed me. We knew they were going to do that all week, and um, I was ready for the challenge, you know. They even gave me a great throw. In time of trouble, call on the old bees. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's our slogan, whatever necessary. I always say that. Um, it's just the team's got to make big plays. Uh, the team, the offense is struggling. We apologize to our defense. We apologize to our fans. Uh, we really got to get it going next week, and we're going to do a great job this week preparing for
back row with LSU. There was a couple of stunts in there we hadn't seen yet. We had a little trouble picking it up, but now that we've seen it, you know, it shouldn't be a problem, and, I, and we're getting a lot, lot more confident. Hey, Coach, we had just told him to watch for the boot, and then when he faked it out and he rolled back out, my eyes just got big. I went for the play. I went to make the play. Are we still expecting a big play a week out of you now? <laughs> I'll see what I can do, but um, I got to stay within the defense and do what I can. I'm trying to heat up a lot the second half, and uh, everybody was making plays, and, and that's what the defense is supposed to do, and uh, we just did our job and kept the offense from making touchdowns. That really was making us good, because we make a mistake and still fighting hard and that effort is just so great you know people just really can't get around the effort and we keep on keeping that intensity up everything gonna come out fine well okay. well that's exactly they don't have the numbers because of scholarship productions and it made a difference in the, in the uh, second half and uh, when you have young people playing or lack of depth uh, it's gonna wear you out and that's what happened we had a lot more heat than we thought we would have tiger walk there uh, great crowd. It's hard to dad young have a tiger walk at 9.30 in the morning. You know, the crowd was terrific. With no students on campus, still the crowd was right there. Well, was, I, was, I, all, I appreciate all the fans that got up so early to come in, and we come out and break into the field. Coach Dye comes out and uh, uh, to visit with his, I think his 85, which team was that? 88 team. 88 team came out. And we started out, we, we started out backed up. They punted us down. Defense cut them down. We got our two back offense in it, and we're trying to, 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 to knock it out of the end zone. And we take this opening drive in this offense, and running past in a great a great route right here. They tried to press him and, and step tight, and Damian threw a nice pass to Tyrone Goodson uh, for a catch that moves us to midfield. So we stayed right with the running attack, and uh, Rusty got the start. Uh, uh, I always wait like the fans to see who uh, Coach Allison is going to start in the game. And um, we began to move the ball down very well now, so we stay right in the eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, nice run by Fred Beasley. Got us down right down to the a third and two, and here was where probably I let him down. I made a... a I was thinking it was about third and one, and that we were just getting our basic formation and run a quarterback sneak, but it left us too long and didn't get it. We forced us to a field goal there, but still a great first drive for us and a great way to start the game offensively. Uh, they make a big first down on a third play. Uh, go on fourth and five, they go for it, which is... Well, we can't let that happen. The ball, you know, any ball between the 40s, it was on the 39. You just have to play safe because that's fake punt territory. And they make a big play, and we, of course, thank goodness, hold them to a field goal. Great play by Takeo Spice, yeah. fighting through two defenders Man. and making the play himself. He's, he's, big time. Yeah, he's just big moving time. the ball. He, he and Ricky Nell are doing so well. But good pressure, moving the ball around well. Good pressure on the quarterback. There it comes. Uh, Cover set. Leonardo Carson and Jeff Dunlap now able to get rest. Got that broken hand. There's Jeff Dunlap that we hope we're glad to get back mm. and give us some rest up there. But this outstanding kicker kicked a 51 yarder. Wow. It could have been 71, I think. <laughs> and uh, he's just an outstanding kicker. But it's three to three. And now, offensively, here's where defense can you play well, but offensively, we did, did not quite execute well. Hicks, what a great catch that, that is. Uh, but when you try to run that football, a lot of times you got used to a slow moving football game. Have to punt it and watch this uh, nine iron punt by uh, Jared Holmes. That's perfect. I told him if we're going to punt the ball from the 50, I don't want that ball landing in the end zone ever, <laughs> like I did last week. And so that's a perfect one. And this was great because it backed the defense, backed their offense up, and they're working uh, out of a hole. And uh, good pressure there. And watch this. Here's what played through the uh, screen. Uh, Mark Pavis Houston, who opened up the cornerback. Biggest cornerback in America, I think. <laughs> Antoine Nolan came down to help. Here's the pressure again, getting good pressure. Uh, on the quarterback, Rob Tate, true freshman safety, covering their outstanding tie in Ruth and French. And the defense still uh, playing better. And at first it was bending, but not breaking. It's not bending much anymore. Through here, you get the, the two uh, holding penalties that take out of the two drives late in the second quarter. Well, the defense like, hangs on. Yeah, defense held on. See, Virgi just like Virginia, we only had four offensive drives. Two 15 yard penalties ruined two drives. We drive other times, one to midfield, one for score. So there's a great play there. Ricky Neal, again, outrunning their quarterback and, and, and bringing him, sacking him. And their penalty there, we decline it, so they have to punt. So it's a 3-3 game of the half. Not much offense on either side, but uh, it's, it's still very much a football game. Well, when you try to set up an eye formation running attack, we got to remember, 93, we were behind five times at halftime, eight times that season. You need to do better. We need to make it better. But if you're going to commit to getting better at it, you can't, you can't back off. Back in just a minute. halftime score a lot of talking in the dressing room coach well gut check time and that's where we find out what we're made of we went out there uh, with confidence and poise to have the second half 
and uh, it was quite a second half. Right now, it's time to announce the J&M Bookstore Tiger of the game, and who would that be? Ron Taylor, got to be that safety uh, was the turning point in the game. It led not only to two points, but to seven others in the following series. So congratulations to Ryan Taylor, this week's J&M Bookstore Tiger of the Game. We'll be back in just a minute. Tiger of the Game. Presented. Now Auburn will receive the football, and uh, the little guy will come out with it and get you in good field position to start sure, the second. Sure did. We needed to have something good happen. He comes out, uh, does a great job getting field position. Uh, he still can't produce yet. So he still can't make something happen. They got a good kick. He didn't kick it out of the end zone like I thought he would. And Marquise Cooper now... Uh, Another good kickoff. We had one last week, had one this week. This is something, this is something that's been uh, the new to us. We didn't have as many of these last year. That's a great return. Puts us in good field position. So even if you don't score, you create field position uh, that's going to affect the game. Get one big play here, but then the drive stalls. And it's so important, this first series. There's the first one. There's the big catch. Almost bobbed it. They were upset, but the film show, he, he able to grab it. That was a good call. Great throw by Damien. But here's the critical play. I think this is where we, uh, this is the series where we missed the field goal, was mm -hmm. that last series. We, we, we had a third down, which they dropped the ball on the three-yard line. There's a big catch, darn it, that got them in good field position. Quarterback was doing a good job. Uh, nice tackle there by Larry Casher, but got them in good field position. But mm -hmm. our defense still. Two big plays right here and get it down. Two big plays. You got a little nervous because we, we go down there and miss a field goal. And now they get momentum coming back with that. But defense showed the maturity that we're looking to see tightens up now as you'll see they get the ball right down to about the four yard line and you're really concerned now because the game is tied three to three and you see a little momentum switch but this is where our defense shows a lot of maturity get them a sack right there great job by the entire defensive front i'd have to say finished off by jimmy brum brother clinton reese uh charles dorsey they have to settle for the short field goal and take the six to three lead the only time they led in the game Again, it's just, again, it's one of those cases where but you find out what you're made of right here. Offense comes right back. We knew we had, we had moved the ball straight down the field first series, only to drop the ball in three and miss the field goal. Now Damien takes it upon himself. Watch the end of this. Now, he would usually go out of bounds. He had to get a first down there, and he makes it by half a ball. That was the third down play. Third and eight. They measured, and he made it by half a ball. That was a critical play right there. Shows a lot of experience there. Another big third and five. Nice big play. Go north and south. That's right. Know where sticks are. No, you've got to get north and south by Carson Bailey. Big play there. Here's a third and 21 coming now. Well, here's That's the next one. 49-yard line. We this have is a, third, a huge play. Huge play. Third and 21, but instead of panicking, there's a nice throw to Carson Bailey sitting in the middle. And a huge play right there, and they're just shaking their heads. So their coach has got to disappointed too. You hadn't did. gone over the middle much, but no, well, they, that's right. That's that's the ear they were left. There's Beasley on the first dig, running down, great power, trying to get to get. Oh, I wish they'd give it to him, but I want to make sure he gets that score. So we give it to him up the middle. Now watch the power. Watch the push here. Yeah. The power of the offensive line, and you just continue to watch the the, the tackles and guards, and watch the center there just finishing off there. What great uh, great effort right there. There's a, I, I'm excited about that. Just it's, it's late in the ball game. We're trying to make something happen. There's Fred, who's probably our, our, our top back, I would say, all around back in, in the things that he's doing for the football team. Although we had a lot of great plays from Rusty and the other backs also. But that gets that lead right back immediately after they scored. It came right back. And now, Here they this, come. this is the critical. We're in two deep, and they throw a slant right into two deep and just make a play. And now we've got, look at this. Quentin Reese comes all the way back from defensive end to outrun him and, and almost strip the ball. But now we have let them get back. This is what, you know, you just... Can't put them away, but defense did not buckle. Did fourth not, quarter, same fourth drive. Fourth quarter, same did drive. not buckle. Going to put pressure. A lot of pressure. That fourth quarterback took some hits. He did a great job. Uh, Stuart Patrick, but the defense was putting some heat on him. He came with double blitzes right here. Oh, and he got Brad hit hard. Ware gets oh, a hand he on had. He, I tell you, Brad Ware could have gone all Brad the way. Ware, excuse me. Brad Ware could have gone all the way, but it's a great defense again. Comes up. Holds them to their third field goal. For some reason, I kept thinking they scored yesterday in my interviews on Sunday. <laughs> but it's a, it was three field goals. No touchdowns. The first time at Auburn since 1990. I promise not to say Larry Ware again. <laughs> That's a Montgomery name. <laughs> and uh, here we go, uh, Damian Craig here. Nice throw. Now, here's a third and three. Watch Beasley right there. Oh, man. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be dancing when it's <laughs> time to make a first down. Uh, what a senior ought to be doing right there. Lowering his Get good field getting... position. We don't score, but we get good field position. And it's going to pay off right here. Right here. They, a little mistake right there. Who makes that hit tackle? Oh, Fred Beasley again. And always trying to do whatever's necessary. Great play there. They get a penalty tacked on, uh, which really was a critical penalty, too, because it's got them inside the three. Their first running play gets them out to about the five or six. 
I mean, here's probably as much of a, a game a game changer. The bootleg had been successful a couple of times earlier in the game. Well, he probably, he probably had to make this call to, to make something happen, but the quarterback didn't even have time to get rid of the football as the uh, uh, outside linebacker Ryan Taylor comes. Right there, if he had dumped, he might have got it out, but no, not even enough time to get rid of it. And a safety, uh, which leads to a, a kick, which they did punt. I don't know whether it's just a kickoff or punt on a, at a, after a safety. They decide to punt, uh, probably thinking they can cover, but we get the ball in the 30, 33, and then he makes a good run up to midfield. And uh, offense now starts at midfield. So the defense has not only given us two points, but has given us the ball at midfield. Uh, my hat's off to the coaching staff, Coach Oliver, and the coaching staff of the defense. And all Third the and eight. And here's Damien Kegg. Too much, so much protection. That offensive line protection. Big wow, play. Okay. Big play. But this is where we lose our poise here. This is, I mean, that, that's a, that's, it's not ugly, it's just illegal. It's a 15-yard penalty. And mm -hmm. it could have cost us because it moved us out to the 16. But he, Damian Craig, checks off in the very first play and makes the pass against the pressure defense that we thought we'd get a lot of and didn't. The first time, every time they're in it, we hit something deep. So we felt good. We threw it. They got lined up in it about twice, and we hit something deep twice. Both are good. For, and, and that's uh, the score you needed. That's right. That, that put the game away. And, uh, uh, our de defense finishes them off. All we did, the only thing we got wrong, we, we sack him right here. The only thing we do wrong is we hit him out of bounds once and get a 15-yard face mask when they would have cost him the game. The defense... Uh, Very uh, proud of making this. Well, this is where, you know, uh, uh, you want to see defenses uh, putting offenses away. Uh, and this is what we were concerned about last year because of our lack of depth. But uh, you don't see these things. Virginia had to score three times to only get one score in the fourth quarter. Uh, Ole Miss could not move the ball. And uh, big intercept right there. That's Brad Ware. Brad Ware fighting <laughs> Antoine Nolan for that interception. And uh, the fight that they got into in the locker room they were talking about is on the next play. Uh, that, that they break up each other's interception. But uh, here they are again. They've got, gone to Romero Miller. Uh, Ryan Taylor again getting a big sack there, putting pressure on. Shows some of that safety speed when he had when he played safety. At 225 pounds, still got pretty good quickness and speed. Getting a few more players in now. Uh, see Jeremy Banks playing. There's our two guys fighting over the ball, and uh, they're roommates, so they, they had a little fun with that. But it was a great, uh, a lot of respect there for Coach Tuberville and the job he's done. Done a good job. Uh, we always have great games against Ole Miss, um, and they're just getting better and better. And so uh, uh, my hat's off to their players and their coaches also. We'll be back in just a moment. Staff, I want to extend sympathy to Coach Jeff Bauer, Southern Miss, and his family. Yeah, it's so sad. Uh, Friday night, his 17-year-old daughter was killed in a car wreck, and. Uh, uh, our prayers and thoughts go out to the Jeff Bauer family from all the Auburn people and the coaching staff. LSU dead ahead. They had a big win over Mississippi State uh, Saturday night. Yes, LSU is undefeated, top 10. It's going to be hard if you're going into to, to Death Valley. But uh, this is what we've been waiting for. This turns into a huge divisional game just like we thought it would and just like we wanted. Uh, we've been there before and won. We've been there before and lost a close one. But I think one thing is for sure we'll be ready. They will be ready. They'll have Kevin Falk back probably and, and an excellent running game that will challenge the Auburn defense. They're just an outstanding football team. They've got very strong defense. They've got an outstanding offense uh, and veterans, and uh, that's why they're picked uh, so high in the Western Division. This is uh, turning out to be a pretty good West Division race. It will be. I think, of course, it's, it's so early now. Uh, anything can happen, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, Mississippi State now has a loss. Ole Miss a loss. Arkansas loss. But... Uh, Everybody else still in the hunt. Uh, Saturday night's going to be a big one for all of us Auburn people. As it figured to be. And we'll be back next week with the uh, replay of Auburn and LSU. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you then. coaching right. That wasn't about us coaches. We did everything we could to screw the things up. It's about a bunch of young fellas with hearts that big. It's about men that fight and don't want to quit. Coaches will just mess it up half the time. That was our, that, that'll be go down now, man. It's one of the 
That's a biggie. That's one of those that you'll always remember. But, hey, that and only last day. I'll tell you what kind of team we got, man. We got to have one of those every week. We got to have one of those every week. We've had three. Let's just keep on going. Let's back to our prayer. Everybody touch somebody now. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us here safely. Dear God, thank you for the hearts and effort of everyone here. Thank you for the, the, the just all the, the letting us play this game. God, thank you for every side of this organization, every, every player, every coach, every assistant, everybody. Thank you for pulling together and loving each other and working so hard. We love you and glory we receive. That be in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Is the Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers go 80 yards in the final three minutes of the game to beat LSU 31-28. to Coach, you can uh, coach in this game and play in it all your life and not experience many of those. That's one of those special games. There's not many you get, but that'll always be one of the great Auburn victories down in LSU. It certainly will. Let's, uh, let's go in the dressing room now right after the game for... I guess what you could call an Auburn curtain call to uh, really go out and see their fans and uh, celebrate this great victory with them. Here they go. You've never done this, Coach. Well, you know, I, I worry about it being in the visitor stadium. Do you go out? Is it, is it proper and proper? But our fans were so good. And, uh, it's, uh, and, I, and, I, and I really underestimated LSU at Baton Rouge uh, home field advantage. They have an incredible crowd, home field crowd, that uh, is as big as any southern uh, stadium at night. But our crowd kept us close. It kept us comfortable in, at a stadium where it's hard to feel comfortable. Tyrone Dillard there. There's our blonde. I told, I told Dave Marshall that if we could get more blonde players, we'd be a better football <laughs> team. And so... Uh, and Jared Juan. Holmes had a great punting game, and look at this now, Coach. This is this is precious. Well, I just I think I think the players are they're really they're just good fellas, and uh, the better people can get to know the guys and know they're just like everybody else, and uh, it's good feeling. We were gonna get a touchdown. The line believe, the running backs believe, the receivers believe. We all believe, and we just took it down there, and we did what we had to do. And you stuffed it in, the end. and we stuffed it in. They said we they was tougher than us. They ain't tougher than us. If they're tougher than us. They're the one. We knew we were gonna come out and do it the second half. Forget all what happened last year. This year we gonna win the second half. We gonna take it all the way. Oh, yeah, I said, you gonna get me all sweaty? Right, let me hug you when we get back. <laughs> This team is, is, is something special about them, and uh, I'm, I'm glad for everybody, coaches. I mean, we, we, we pulled it off, and uh, we're going to continue doing it. Most definitely. It was a big senior class victory. A lot of young guys stepped up also. Keith Sport did a great job. Damon Craig. And... <laughs> then after they caught it, you know, I look at the back of the huddle. I looked at Coach Allison, and I saw that look in his eye, and I said, man, I know I got to score this one. <laughs> I, I got to take it on in. But the Virginia win was probably, well, if we look back on it, we have a great season like I think we can. It'll probably be the biggest victory that we had this season because we had some young guys start that first the first game we were in a hostile territory we were able to come back and win that football game in the fourth quarter so i think that set the tone for the whole season it's one of those typically hot humid days in baton rouge that kind of worried me a bit because they live in it all the time but uh, the tiger the auburn tigers don't that's what makes it one of the most difficult stages to play in on a saturday night mm -hmm. Let's get into the game now, and we'll see that uh, on-the-road Tiger Walk, was a, which is always a great treat. And, I, and this must be great comfort to the players to, to go through that. Well, when you go into a stadium like Baton Rouge, which is the toughest, if you can get off the bus and the only thing you see the first time you get off the bus is Tiger fans, Auburn Tiger fans, mm -hmm. that calms your people down. You don't believe, you can't believe what a, an effect that has on our players. And so, uh, with no dis disrespect for our opposing team in their stadium, that helps us get off the bus and get into our stadium, just as well as our fans right above our young men coming out. And you couldn't have asked for a better start. It was, you know, we got off to a fast start, and we have not had fast starts. Mm -hmm. But we decided to come out there and run and throw, run and throw. Tyrone Goodson, one of our seniors, making a big catch there, Damian Craig throwing to him. We mixed it up very well. We did not try to just run it down their throats, but Watch we ran this play by the senior fullback. And then Fred Beasley. All those guys you've seen so far are seniors. Reach the ball across the goal line for a score, 
a minute or two into the game, we've got a touchdown. And so a great start, uh, and I'm so proud. And then they come back and watch our defense. You'll see Keo's fights. A big interception here. He was one of the top tight ends in the country when he was in high school, as well as linebacker. This was the only disappointing series. We should have gotten points here. Damian makes a great run to take it down to the five-yard line. Watch, he kicked the ball. He kicked it out of his out of his arms, and it's unfortunate. I've done it myself um, when I played football in high school. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's something that did not become a factor in the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. Stop him again here. Herb Tyler did not get a quick start. No, they try. They, you know, it's funny. If you're a running team, you're always trying to pass it better. Mm -hmm. If you're a passing team, you always try to run it better. Mm -hmm. And so they could not pass it as well as they like. We don't run it as well as we'd like. This Look is, at Hicks Poor. This is a Hicks Poor drive here. Well, Hicks had had a great evening. You know, he's another senior. We have some seniors now. We have a lot of underclassmen. But we have some seniors that you, really step forward. You can't see this play how it unfolded, but you can explain it, Coach. Well, he just pumped him, and then he turned downfield and hit him up over the defender's back. And Hicks Ford made another made a touchdown catch, and that was a great drive there. We're up 14-0, which makes them a little bit uh, uh, nervous about their drive. And, uh, and again, that was the points that made the difference. I mean, later on, they played us even all the way through to the very end. Yeah. You get to thinking maybe we could get three up, and that would really, that would really. Well, I really, I really would like to have seen us to be 21 to nothing or 28 mm -hmm. to seven. Mm -hmm. That was a big interception there. Jeff Dunlap had an outstanding game. That was him there knocking the ball down. Jeff Dunlap giving us some valuable snaps. He can really help this. Well, he's got great athletic uh, skills, and uh, and again, we start pounding them until they do what they do best. They're the best running team in the conference, and yeah. maybe one of the best non-option running teams in America. And they're very difficult to stop. And they're a, they're a lot better than they were last year. Boy, this is a great... Well, pass. that's the fade route. The fade. If people are going to pay you press man, the first route that you better execute is the fade. And Damien Craig throws it better than anybody in the country. Second quarter now. Opening drive of the second quarter. And uh, Rusty Williams takes it in. Well, that just puts us up 27. Rusty ran a super run. He's, he's probably the best eye tailback that we've got in the eye formation. But they are not to be denied. This is why they are a, an outstanding team. And one that has to be... A, uh, as fans must be proud of their program after that night. It was a tough loss for LSU. Stop them here, but Auburn can't move on its next possession. Now this is their second possession of the second quarter. Well, the second quarter was a very tough quarter for Auburn. We, we, I mean, this guy was something special. This is Collins. This is not yes. Kevin Falk. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but but uh, the second quarter was one in which they had us on our heels offensively and defensively. But just to show you that you could ever count this, a game's final outcome by a halftime score. This is, was only halftime, but you'll see the second quarter continue. They score. We have a hard time. This, I'll tell you, Marquise Cooper, he has found, he's so valuable to us in kickoff returns, punt returns, uh, multi, spread wide outs, uh, running game. He does a super job of getting us field position. We've seen three or four great kickoff returns, great blocking. Uh, holding penalty, though, took you out of that drive. Well, the holding, you just can't have holding. I just get so upset when you return a kick and you have holding. Here comes the diesel. I tell you, the, the Cecil the diesel Collins. I, <laughs> I, 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 I wish we ran it that well, but if we did, we probably wouldn't pass it well. And we'd have had 28 points this week instead of 31. Now, the, the crowd really gets into it after Well, this, this. is where they just... Uh, that, that, now, there, you know, it's funny. There's the celebration that we had. They got a penalty... The officials forgot to tack it on. They just apologized afterwards. But it was a, you know, they had a great second. We had a great first quarter. They had a great second quarter. It was all even. It was an even ball game at halftime. We start the game over at halftime. And we'll be back in just a moment. Tiger of the game. Uh, Coach, I noticed that you changed uh, some of the things you were doing, and Bill Oliver changed some of the techniques they were using to stop the run. Well, we had to. We put some new stuff in to, to distract them and make us go. And in the second half, you'll see, we tried to change some of our formations and really had a tough time. I had a tough time calling plays. I was using different formations and personnel groupings. And, uh, um, I mean, you just have to put up with me because we had delays and, and almost had to use timeouts and got to get a better job. Almost had a safety yeah. there. That would have really uh, would have caused some problems for LSU. Going to get some good field position out of this, though. And uh, Damien starts at the 44 in their territory. You have to go back to the first half to remember how much momentum they had. And we had to turn it around. And we come back. There's a great catch by our tight end, Kevin McLeod. We get down. We don't get a touchdown, but we get some key points. Mm -hmm. And you see right get there, Jared, lead, yeah. Jared Holmes gets us back on top. And all that momentum they, they took into the dressing room, they've lost it right there. It's going to be nip and tuck the rest of the way. And you get a stop on them on this next series. Defense is incredible. The defense came through. 
recognized what they were hurting us with in the running game in the second quarter and came back. And you didn't see that great offensive drive in the second half as much as you did in the, in the second quarter. You know, it's remarkable. You have to figure that, uh, that the way they pound people, they're going to tire you out and really have a second half, and yet uh, the defense held them to one touchdown in the second half. You know, as hot as it was, yeah. I think it's a great credit to our players it and is. to our conditioning yeah. coach and to our coaches. Our players had fresh legs and stayed in the game and played a better second half for the third week in a row. This guy, though, he had fresh legs. Yeah. You know, when you have three great tailbacks, they all play the same position. But when one gets tired, the next one goes in. But really, they, none of them get tired. Their first lead of the game in the fourth quarter. And right here is a very pivotal point in this game because they almost broke it open right Well, here. right here, it wasn't our offense that got us out of the jam. It was Jared Holmes. Not as a kicker, but as a punter. He kicked. He had over 50-yard average in punting. And his greatest asset to our program this week was as a punter. Did a super job. On their 35, you can see they're on their 35 right there. And we bring them down. And I tell you, they should have had the ball on our 30 or 40-yard line. Mm -hmm. Terrific, terrific play. Well, we just said they're trying to make something happen. We're still, there's a good play right there. Uh, Antoine Noah made a great player play there. We got the ball again. There's, you know, Sincade Pennington, I thought, was Save the catalyst. Yeah. Sincade made, was the catalyst in this drive, had two or three great runs, and uh, he's finding his, his, his contribution to our offense. Here's another guy you don't see a lot of. Eric Lowe, we're going to see a lot more of him the rest of the season. We, we have not been able to substitute as much as we'd like. Eric Lowe is ready to play. Good catch there. Damien just, just eludes, uh, look at him elude people. Makes a perfect throw. Oh. Look at that. Looks just like the LSU game last year. Yeah. Robert Baker in the yeah. same corner of a different end zone. <laughs> That's right. That's same, right. And uh, we did not get this one either. But there's the defense coming through real strong. Look Gotta at that. Got to have a stop now. Charles Dorsey making a big stop there. Time is running out. Got well, to have a stop. They're afraid to do too much because, they, you know, they're, they're, they're still winning the ball game. But we come through. There's a critical third and six. We stop them for a three-yard gain. We've just got a little bit of time, and only time will tell if we can pull this off. But this is three real. minutes to go at the Damian 20. Craig takes over. A lot of receivers make plays. Hicks pulled a big a route, a call a flag route or a corner route, and gets a first down, fumbles it, but knocks it out of bounds so that the other team does not get the ball. This is senior to senior in this drive. Well, we just I mean he's making so many plays. The offensive line is giving him protection. Boy, there's big big. Uh, um, great play right there out of Damian Craig. Here comes a third and four now that was really critical in the drive, too. Well, we're trying to find somebody. Look, he throws it again. Look at the great run. Tyrone Goodson makes a great play over there. The little crossing routes helped us this week. We had not used them much. The crossing routes helped us. It's getting down to 50 yards. Get a five-yard penalty now and second and ten. Damian, I mean, there is the Hicks poor. Damian to Hicks poor. Becomes a big catch at the six-yard line. And there's the run down big there. Big Victor moves him out of there. There's the touchdown. There's the touchdown. It makes the difference. 30 seconds left. And look at that. I think there's just a great uh, a sense of uh, uh, just satisfaction, excitement. Uh, the fans just so, so late. Here's their last drive. They've got a couple of plays. Here's the last big play. They come, they come throw there. They, they, the game's never over. They never quit the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, there's not there's, in college where you can get a first down and stop the clock. That's right. <laughs> and, the, and the field goal right here still ties the game up and throws it in overtime. There it is. We stop the play, but there's a penalty on the play, and they get a ch chance to kick a field goal. It's blocked the line. We decided we could not find who blocked it. It was a team block. It was a team block. Blocked by our team defense, and that's the end of the ball game. Damien Craig. <laughs> there we are. I, I'm so excited. I'm glad I get to run out in the field again. <laughs> I forgot what it was like. It was fun to run out there, and it was just to react to a great win. And it you was, know, the scary thing about that thing is that that guy had kicked a field goal of that distance in high in school. In high school. He had plenty of leg. I yeah. think he tried to lower the trajectory of yeah. the kick to get it that far, but uh, we told our players, don't rush to block the kick. Jump up to block the kick, and it worked. What a win. One of the all-timers. Back in just a minute. From faithful, don't get ahead of ourselves. We've got to go out next week and play four quarters just like every week. Against an excellent football team. There's no question. They, they took uh, Nebraska right to the wire. And it should be an exciting game. Don't forget the pay-per-view and the uh, Auburn uh, Central Florida game begins at 6 p.m. Uh, on Saturday night. And uh, we'll, we'll have the pay-per-view for contact the local cable operator or if you're a dish guy, you know what to do. And we'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by Gus Meyer, Brookwood Village, Birmingham. Ran for 57 yards and a score, and the Tigers beat the Golden Knights 41 to 14.
Great. I had all day to throw the ball. Even when I was fresh, I bought time, and my receivers did a good job to get open. They made a lot of tough catches for me tonight. And um, tonight we just had a good game. We were very fortunate to make some big plays and, and to keep the offense off the field. And, um, that was the key, and the defense played a great job, did a great job of giving us the ball back tonight. The following is an Auburn Network production. Nine yards from their 21. Deep snap to Culpepper. Bobble the ball. Picks it up. Rolling to his right. Culpepper hit behind the line. Down he goes. Back in the 12-yard line by Leonardo Carson. With Here's a toss sweep to Williams. Looking for a first down. He's got it. Broke away at the 20. The 15 to 10. He's at the 5. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! One, two, one, two, three, four. And we have we have a victory. We get we get here. We pull tight, and we thank each other for it, man. We thank each other for it. These guys don't ever ever take a victory for granted. They don't ever take a victory for granted. That's a great win, man. Because that team's a, that's a fine football team. Uh, they took everybody to the wire, but us. They didn't take us to the wire. Uh, that's a great job. Defense, great adjustments, great adjustments. Way, way to believe in what you're being told. Believe in what they tell you to do, and you'll do it every time. And offense, I don't care what we run or pass. Tonight they gave us a pass, and we took it, and, I, and, and, and we took it, and we took it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, that was a difference. Hey, Dante Culpepper, he's fine, but I'll take my D.C. I'll take yeah! my D.C. Yeah! <laughs> we we we're back in the conference next week. We're on the road, and we got to have a great game, South Carolina. We about, we about missed that one last week. Let's have a great week. Get another conference victory. we got to have it. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Saturday night, Jordan Hare was a fun place to be. The Auburn Tigers defeated Central Florida 41-14. Coach, uh, hats off to the fans. They, this is a 1A school for only two years, but the fans knew this was a big game. Phil, I thought it was one of the best Tiger walks that we have had in a long, long time. The band was better than ever, and the crowd was so loud that it really affected their play. And so all of those, the fans, Tiger Walk, our great band and the job they do, it was incredible atmosphere for a Central Florida game, that's what you love about Auburn. And it was an excellent football game, as we will show you in just a few minutes. Right now, let's go into the Auburn dressing room and talk to some of the players, beginning with the defensive guys who had that great second half. Offense, the offense at halftime just told us, just, you know, just three and out, just hold, just hold the offense for them, and they're going to put some points on the board. And that's exactly what they did. They came out of the third quarter on five, put up three touchdowns, and, you know, that's what won the game. And we just said, you know, Plan to rotate a lot of DBs all night and uh, uh, trying to show the quarterback knows the coverage he hadn't seen before. And, and, uh, and I thought we did a pretty well job adjusting the second half to some things that they gave us some difficult situations in, in the first half. Yeah, yeah, I just, I saw the ball rolling and I never slowed down because it looked like the running back was starting to pick it up and it rolled off of him. And I just kept going, just, you know, coach always say hustle all the time. So I just kept hustling and I ended up with the fumble. Get some more because I got a feeling you're going to get a lot of chances. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get a whole lot of chances. Boy, well, hey, yeah, he's a big guy. You know, he did a good job of getting out of the pocket and throwing the ball. But, you know, I have to take my hat off to him. They have a really good football team for being one of three. I give all the praise to the defensive line. They came out, did their assignment, put pressure on him, made him do some things he didn't want to do. and kind of made it easy for the secondary. The secondary ready to play, too. Well, it was a fun game. Uh, mentally, I don't think I was ready to come out and play the way I should have played. And we, um, by doing that, we let Central Florida play with us for a half. And at halftime, I thought the score was 14-14, so we go up and score. I'm looking at it 28-14, I was like, where did we get that touchdown from? <laughs> so it gave us a little cushion. I felt a lot better after that. Third and 23, and you get 25. How many third and 23 plays do you guys have? I mean, we don't have too many, because, you know, the penalty is kind of, you know, knocked us back. And so, you know, the, the coach just made, you know, some great calls and everything, and I just, you know, had to make the kick, because it was a, you know, crucial third down conversion. You know, watching the film, and we know how they was going to play as bunt man, and we just it's just one of those nights where receivers either make plays or, you know what I'm saying, or they don't. And we went out there and made a lot of plays tonight. Now, Eric is standing right here. You want to thank him for recovering that fumble? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Hey, I hold him about 50 times. I mean, God. <laughs> hey, he just was there. He just in life hustle on uh, Eric Lowe's part. And, uh, I'm glad he did. <laughs> 
Time now for this week's Win Dixie Tiger Quiz, presented by Nabisco, makers of great tasting Chip Ahoy, Nilla Wafers, and Oreo cookies. This former Tiger quarterback led Auburn to an incredible come from behind win at Florida in 1994. Who is he? The answer in a Let's get into the game. Uh, kind of a semi cool night at Jordan Hare. Felt, felt like fall weather, and uh, the rain went away. It stayed nice. Crowd was great, and uh, uh, we come out really expecting a tough ball game. This team has played so well. We've talked about it a lot, and we were really concerned that there would be too much firepower, and they and it came true. Uh, this they, guy is just a great quarterback. He, we had him sacked several times early, and he just made things happen. The defense comes through, gets a stop there, and you'll see we forced them. They drive the ball down the field. Great play by Charles Dorsey, who, who beat the center. Forced him to a field goal, but watch. There it is. Jimmy Brumbaugh breaks through the line. They had blocked two extra points. We make the first field goal block. That was a big turnaround there, uh, and it kept them from sure points. It's important that they never had a lead. They, they tied the game a uh, time or two, but they never had That's a lead. That's right. You, you, just, you build them up. Here's Damien. Just walk, look at this great little play there. That's what he does so well. Instead of just taking the five-yard scramble for a run, he just slides over and makes the pass to Rusty Williams and did a great job. As we said, no sacks by the offensive line. Here's the fade route. It's such a beautiful route. Some people like the option or like certain types of run. That's the most beautiful route in football, the fade. It's a timing route, not a takeoff, in a, in a, but a beautiful pass there. Now we have the same route called, but they played off, so we just stop. And he hits the man on a hitch route. That's all the same route, that route and the route to, to, to Goodson on with the takers. Here's the third and goal from the seven. Very good. David did a great job. It was a little bit of a wide snap. Uh, he was able to, he couldn't find the ball, and then he made the throw just in time. Good drive there to get it going, uh, but here's the guy that really a uh, good effort there. Great break on the ball by Antoine Nolan. Uh, put pressure on by Leonardo Carson. We tried to put pressure on the quarterback without having to blitz, and that was important. This front four. Their next possession here. They had to punt. We didn't oh. move their next possession. They didn't move into the quarter. Good sack. Good, good stop of the run there. We pretty much shut their run down, and they were not able to get any significant gains with the running game. Damon comes back on. There's his one mistake. He read the, uh, the coverage and threw back to a secondary receiver, but he threw it like a fade route, not a takeoff. I was going to yell at him, but he was so mad at himself, I thought it was a waste of time to yell at him because he knew exactly. And missed by 12 passes, having the all-time leading uh, his, string of passes without interception. Right, his first in 88 attempts. That was a big play. Defensively, we gave up two plays. We gave up, a, we had to, we, they scored on his turnover, so it was a short drive. Offense gave him field position, and you'll see later where they go. There's a good sweep to the outside, barely gets in, great effort by them. They tied up 7-7, seven to seven. and so I began to think, you know, this may be a scoring match. Let's go out there and not take our time trying to improve any part of our game. What a great catch. They're playing pressure, bump and run, and he goes over the top, and Dane, great throw and catch. You see there's the, here's the screen. Boy, the screen was set up nicely. This thing's almost a touchdown. Right there, great job of diving for the first down on our screen. Good, good plays, a couple of good screens we ran uh, Saturday. Damien steps up, watch him slide over, just dump it to a great catch to Hicks yeah. four. Doing a fine job of, of scrambling. Can you imagine scrambling and around people and still looking for receivers as people are about to hit you? Nice run on fourth down by uh, Rusty Williams. We missed a short yard. I wish I could show you the penetration of the end. Look at the penetration. See, that's why the quarterback sneak wasn't good Saturday. I ran a, we missed a fourth and one because we ran a sweep, an outside play. They took the sneak away, and we have to make plays like that. But good. Got great blocks out there on that. Seven. Here's the only tough thing we did. We blitzed everybody. We didn't blitz much. They threw the perfect pass, a, a slip screen, and a great job there by Herman Banks to stop him on the one. But it was just, you take the two plays, the interception that gave the other team field position, that play, and they may not score uh, much at all. But here's all oh, the quarterback and We have the perfect defense call, and he gets the free hit on the quarterback. That's how good he is. A lot of people miss on oh, that Oh, everybody could. I mean, what does he weigh? He weighs 252 pounds. Mm -hmm. There's an ounce of fat on him. He's going to be a big time. The important thing is you come back here and score. Oh, sure. That's a nice play. We hit the underneath receiver. Uh, moving the ball downfield. Clifton Robinson's becoming a, a, a part of our office. Big part. Third There's and three. Third possession three. play. Nice possession pass to Carson Bailey. A lot of receivers uh, caught a lot of football. Uh, and that was encouraging. That it goes to so many people. Nice throw and catch there. They, they make a missed tackle. He takes down to one. But look at the effort here. Ro Eric Lowe chasing the play. Gets on the ball. And I know, I know Tyrone Goodson, like I said, is thankful that uh, <laughs> Eric Lowe hustles. And here's Beasley powering over and doing a great job uh, of getting the touchdown. It's so funny. Fullbacks are so important to football. And yet, statistically, you can't see it unless you look at what they do to help block, 
short yards runs, touchdown runs, things like that. It was an exciting first half, and not a fan or a player or a coach was sure about how this thing was going to go. And we'll be back in just a minute. At the half, and uh, really shut them down in the second half. Well, I, and I think what I was telling them in the, in the after the game talk is that if they will listen to the schemes that are being taught them, the different coverages and disguises, and not do their own thing, they can do an incredible job, and that's what we saw in the second half. But we were concerned offensively. We said, forget running right now. Let's go out there and attack this people. Because you thought you had to outscore them. Yeah, but that, yes, we had to outscore And they were playing so tight, bump and run. That hurts you if you can't play, but it leaves them open for big plays. And you'll see big play after big play. And it's a guessing game on their part. This quarterback, oh, beautiful play, Rob Tate there. But a, a, a rusher was, hold, was holding on to the quarterback, so he did not have time. Great job, Rob Tate. He'll intercept those balls one day. Hey, when we do the dadgum wave, it's when the other team has the ball, not when we have the ball. <laughs> but it was fun to watch. It's the other team that needs to have the ball. They got it right later. <laughs> Damien Craig, whatever. You know, I think he throws as well on the run as he does standing, standing in the pocket. But both ways, Tyrone Goodson right there just trips up. Would have been a score. Uh, another 100-plus yard receiving day. Uh, that's three or four in a row, three in a row, I think. And uh, great job. Hicks Ford did a good job, too. There's Beasley making a great, great block, block yes, there yes. to open up Damian Craig on the outside. And Damian Craig right now, it needed that. we needed to have a big play. He runs it in. And again, everybody played back on the receiver. And uh, uh, he runs it in for a score. Nice job. We're up 14. But still, you got to have a great defensive play here because we know three, three touchdowns is something we got to get. Good, good protection for them that time. But watch the coverage here. We make great adjustments. Great open field tackle. Martavis did a much better job last week. Had some tough, tough uh, time tackling uh, as, as for him, him and he did a good job at that time we're back on offense protection looks good damien steps up in a wide open pocket she scrambled around instead of running it finds an open receiver hicks four uh with damien scrambling you need to change her out and run full feet across the field because mm -hmm. he will find it. here's a third and one coming now there's a big third and one call and here's the what we tried to do earlier there's the great block by fred beasley tj mears and rusty williams runs into the end zone 120 yard rushing night for us uh, and if you look around the SEC, it all the isn't great. It's better than about 80% of the teams in mm -hmm. the conference were rushing. But look at Rusty Williams there. He does a good job. And again, uh, we're so proud of that run there. That gives us a score. And uh, he does what I like to see after touchdown. He kneels to celebrate. And that's what they'd <laughs> like you to do. Yeah. Great coverage there. The quarterback has to throw through the eyes. And look at there. Herman Banks finally get playing time. You're seeing the athletic ability. Rob Pate again. Uh, great job pressuring the quarterback, but also... Uh, being near the receiver. Another stop, third of the quarter. Boy, getting the field there. Good run here in a scramble. This is what I like my quarterback to do right there. <laughs> get uh, on the ground. <laughs> well, because I don't have my second one quite ready to go like he does. And uh, that's a good way to get on the ground. Here they come. Good pressure. Slide up. This is one of his scrambles. Oh, let's go back. This is where you really worry about a, 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 a clip. But, you know, they did a good job. And he's just going to scramble up and get out of bounds. Having a penalty here. Now, here comes a third down and 24. Well, there's not many third and 24 calls, but we tagged a post on the back side. And you'll see where we're going to throw it to the left, but we tagged or added a post route to the back side just in case they rolled over and they gave us the back side post for 25 yards. It was a nice situation there. Going to the rookie here. There's Clifford Robinson. Now, he won't want to get that end zone. i got to get him in that end zone, uh, but he does a great job. And you saw his punt return abilities when Marquise got banged up. Uh, Clifford Robinson could be as good. Here's a little rollout. Finds a, a, a tight end, Kevin McLeod. So nice to get that ball to our tight ends. They yeah. caught a couple of passes. Kevin McLeod's turning to a fine tight end along with Tyrone Dillard. This drive, uh, I, I think, I think uh, Coach, uh, the, the opposing coach, threw in the towel here, Coach. He's well, well, I think what it does, he's got a he's got a big season left out there, and he don't need to get that quarterback killed. He kept him in, but I think pretty much at that point uh, they were going to mix it up, but still they were just saying. You know, we're going to keep it down, y'all keep it down, and that's kind of what happens at some point in the game where you either sub, I can either sub or leave Damien in, and it's going to go either way. And they don't need to get this guy hurt. He's a chance for them to have a winning season in their second year of 1A football. And so I, you don't want to get him in trouble. But they got one more drive here. If they score, I'm probably going to keep my first team in. Uh, if they don't, we're going to our second teamers, and the, our defense comes forward here. They get a penalty there for holding it. Moves back, and here's the option. Great job of pressure. There's it. They they run their option just like we do. Uh, there's uh, Haven Fields makes the big recovery there. Uh, Courtney Rose there around the ball. Terrence Crowder. Defense rose to the occasion again, and now they've got their backup quarterback in. He's El Powell there. He's El Powell. Getting the pressure coming around. There's J Jeremy Banks getting some work. 
Uh, great job. You see Bobby Daffin, uh, Terrence Crowder. A lot of faces there to get some work there. We needed to see our second teamers, and here's the first time Ben Leard has come in. We really called three passes. They were covered. He didn't want the interception. Mm -hmm. He ran for positive yardage, and he just, and again, there's Ben, ben uh, uh, Leard doing some good things out there. Coach McDowell, who's on my dad's staff for eight or nine years. Uh, I've known him for a long time. They won't let me wear that hat at Auburn, though, I don't believe, uh, uh, during games. Uh, at Central Florida, that's the norm. Well, you didn't wear a cap, You, uh, I guess, at nighttime, huh? Well, I wore my cap, I think, most of the game. I didn't start out in it. I didn't oh, start. Yeah. I, I, I wear about half the game. And you know how it is with, the, with, the, with, with your people. TV game, you have to wear your apparel. When you're not on TV, you don't have to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back and talk about getting back into the conference race next week when we return. The Tigers make their first trip to Columbia, South Carolina next week against a team that uh, gave you trouble last year. Uh, yes, and again, this is going to be an early game, 11.30, so you have to be mentally ready to play early. Tiger Walk, people, that's early, but we need you out there if you can be there. That's important to us on these games. They are a outstanding quarterback. This will be a, a very, very tough conference game, and they all count the same, Eastern and Western Division games, and so we're looking for a, for a tough match there. You need a good week of practice. Regional TV and the Auburn Radio Network on the air at 9.30 Saturday morning. We'll see you next week right here. Thank you for joining us. The held the Gamecocks to negative three yards in rushing. In fact, South Carolina gained two yards in the entire third quarter. Auburn's D kept the team in the game until the offense came around. Damian Craig threw for over 300 yards, but it really wasn't one of his better games. I'm just happy to get a win today. It was a very good game, and uh, South Carolina did a great job today, but our defense kept us in the game. Damian and I came off both feeling like it was just okay, that there was nothing special, but I think that's what you can expect with Damian. He's got the ability to do some things like that, and so uh, um, we've got some bigger days ahead for us, and we've got to play. Auburn still eighth in the Associated Press poll. None of the top ten teams lost, so that usually means no movement, which is exactly what we got this week. Florida State. The following is an Auburn Network production. Beasley is the blocking back. Two wide outs to the left. Shotgun formation for Craig. Takes a deep snap. Damian looking. Going to go for broke in the end zone. Bailey's out there. Bailey's got it. Touchdown, Auburn! Tigers rushing three men. Six DBs. Right, taking that deep snap under some pressure. They got him back outside the 30. And Auburn has held Carolina on fourth and two, deep in its own territory. Hey! On, a, on a day where we couldn't have come out flatter on offense, we couldn't have been a better day for the defense to see what y'all did today. That's the best defensive yeah. forms. Defense, give a big round for our defense. Yeah. We're talking about no scores. Defense, yeah. the defense pulled us together and kept us in there. And kept us, I'm glad it's over 11.30 games. We, our offense don't show up at, before, I think, 2 o'clock. It's awful. But that was a great effort. I'm proud of that defense. The way you hustled, the way you pressured their quarterback, and you covered. You could have had about three more picks. You guys were all over the place. But, man, that's why I say we... we, we came out the second half, as we've done this year, and uh, we showed what we're made of. It was not a pretty game. It won't be pretty on film. We made enough mistakes now, the kicking game in all areas, to cost us. But we'll correct those. We'll correct those, and we'll bring a better team on the field. Man, we got a chance to go into Louisiana Tech and go 6-0. That's what we wanted to be, 6-0 next week with Louisiana Tech. And that's our goal. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Another great second half performance by the Tigers on the road. Coach Terry Bowden, the defense is really complimenting the offense in these last two, three. They really, really, I thought it was our best defensive performance. I thought the defense played pretty good four quarters, especially though in the second half. Offensively, we were out of sync, did not play well first half, but we came back, everybody focused, uh, uh, good throwing and catching day, and uh, had a good second half performance, but a great win on the road in the SEC. Let's go to the uh, dressing room now and talk to some of the players right after the game. We're just having fun right now. We're just happy to get this win. Boy, you really paid the price on that last big gainer down to the one. Boy, they were blitzing both, both sides. Yeah, they brought everybody, but um, McLeod did a great job of being aware and looking for the ball. And I just put it out there for him. He showed some great speed to go, go run the ball down, but 
I wish he could have scored instead of getting tackled on the end yard line. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I thought I was in there, but I wasn't, so I'm just happy I got it down there. This tight end ain't such a bad deal after all. No, it's working out just, just <laughs> wonderful. Our defense has carried this team, you know, tremendously through the whole day, and uh, I don't think our offense don't wake up to the 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, games like this, but uh, a mark of a true champion to find somewhere to win, that's what we did. This is the second um, early game that we done came out flat and everything. We just going, you know, hand. Just get up on, go out and just do our thing. No matter what time the game being played, you know, we just got to go out and just kind of our business. It happened. I got a great block by Clifton Robinson pressing. He just made a good block, and Damon just trusted me and gave me the ball. I just went and dove in. Did he have any many folks here? Yeah, I had about 40. I mean, it was really exciting. You know, I've been to William Bryce before. I always wanted to play here. And, you know, this was my first opportunity to play in front of the home fans. But the last 30 minutes, I'll tell you what. Boy, we're proud of those guys. We are proud of them. And I just want to show them I can get the job done just like Leno, Leonardo and Jimmy and those guys. Just as, um, my hat's off to those guys. They played well. Everybody played well. I'm just happy. 5-0 getting ready for Louisiana Tech. W-I-N, one at okay, a time. Okay, that's enough. That's uh, enough. <laughs> every time you hear something about Auburn, a lot of people talk about the offense, uh, not really the defense. So we're just trying to get on the map now. The uh, 6 DB was really working well. Y'all been working on that, eh? Yes, we've been working on it pretty hard all this week. You know, the freshmen, they stepped it up. You know, they played their games. You know, it's, 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 they're not freshmen anymore. You know, they saw, they consider sophomores now. And, you know, they played like they were sophomores. They stepped their game up to another level. Well, we try we try to come together as a team, try, you know, get three in now, get offense a chance so we know offense can score. So we just did what we had to do. Now we're looking for better better, better things next week and the week to follow. thing about it, in that, you all seem to get pressure on the quarterback. A little better. It, it seemed that way, but uh, it's because of coverage, coverage-wise, though. So, you know, it, it all ties together. I just feel like, you know, I, I got to help the team out. Wherever I play, I got to help the team out. That's the most important thing to me. I want to win. Whether I do good or not, I just want to win the ball game. I got about 40, 40, about 45 tickets, but there were a lot more people who got their own tickets. So everybody, my neighborhood was up there. Everybody was up there. The whole town was up there. That uh, Tiger walk on the road, Coach, is really something. I tell you, that, that stadium concerned me. It's a great stadium uh, for a home team and very tough, but our fans were all there. A great Tiger walk, as usual. It's a great feeling to get off. We could hear our fans and our band the entire game, and, and that's very important because they have a huge stadium, and they you, you stayed strong, and, and uh, we tried to acknowledge that after the game. But this is very important right here for our players to come into a, to an away game and get that kind of response from our fans. And, uh, it was exciting and a uh, beautiful day. They have a great, great introductory. Facility. They have a great facility. Yeah. They have a great introductory. Uh, you know, if they're a winning, if they're on a winning roll, their introduction when they bring their team on probably is electrifying. But, but again, uh, uh, they come out, they defer the ball and give us three, three and out, and we get the ball back to them. They won by deferring what we, and we don't get a first down. They get field position. They started our 47. Yeah, this field goal is pretty much a field position field goal. It's caused by the uh, three, three and out by the offense uh, and the short punt. The defense played well, held them to, a, I think, 44. This guy was at 7 for 7, yeah. I think, on the year this at this eighth point. Straight, yeah. Eighth straight. And uh, they go up 3 to nothing. And uh, and now, again, I think for the go first... Go 3 and out again. Yeah, we do about, about 3 times. We just could not quite get it going. Running game's not doing... We're getting... We should we could get 5 yards a carry instead of 2 yards. Here's our defense doing good. Charles Dorsey also had an outstanding game from what I could see from the film so far. 3rd and 5 here. 3rd and 5. There's a good look at the Antoine Nolan excited there. We really like to mix it up. Uh, uh, Five backs, deep at the back, six deep at the back, four deep at the back. They miss the field goal. You go three and out again, and here they come again. Well, they just, again, this was the, this is where the defensive play was so critical because we were not really go doing much offensively. Here's pressure. We're trying to fake the ball and pass it from the play action. And, again, we could not protect the passer. Uh, uh, Second in the and 17 eye. after that sack. Big play coming. Nice big play over the middle to, to uh, Tyrone Goodson. Takes a hit, stays on his feet. And it takes about five to bring him down, that, that massive body that he has. Tyrone Goodson fighting off tackles. There, Change, there's, there's our fans doing such a great job there. Change the quarter, and here comes a big fourth and one. Fourth and one here. We uh, uh, were forced to go for fourth and one when we missed the third and one. Of course, Fred Beasley is the guy you want to give the ball on critical running situations. And then we come back after that fourth and one, and we saw him getting, up, we saw him getting too tight. 
and we go over the top, and this really was not one of his better throws. He was a little bit late with it, wobbly, but great catch by Carson Bailey, and Damien just gave him a chance by leaving it softly away from the defender. Those are sticker bushes down there. Right too, there, yeah, they said that just so you get in trouble if you catch a ball like that. But that was exciting right there, and got us, like last year, if you remember the South Carolina, we're winning 7-3 to three and really haven't done anything except for that play. Second and eight. They make a first down, and then the defense steps up. There's Larry Casher and Brad Ware. Uh, just a lot of young faces that are playing well there. There's Here a first down play, and they try the option. Good job there. I think that Takeo or Ricky Neal, I believe, coming off the back backside. They didn't go to that anymore, did they? Well, real, no, yeah, their, their option is their, there's a zone play that they like. Boy, a great job in the short yardage play by Takeo Spikes. Here they comes fourth and two. This is fourth and two. And they decide to go for it. We blitz Ricky Neal. He comes through clean. And we get the ball now <coughs> in good field position. Great play by the defense. There's the 105, they call themselves, and they had a real good day. <laughs> uh, they did. The they offense comes did. back, and uh, nice little throw. This is what you like. Throw a five-yard pass and then pick, pick up 30 yards on it. That's, that's what you like to see out of these receivers. That's what the, that's what the big boys, NFL people, want to see receivers. Fourth and with. 10 right here. We thought to go for it. We were at that no man's, that 30-yard line kind of. Boy, we throw right to the stick, but, you know, and it's hard for the official to decide where right there. He puts it about a half a ball short instead of being over the line. And we thought it was a first down, but he, he couldn't tell because the ball was coming backwards so hard. Here's the side swing pass. Good tackle out here. Antoine Nolan again making a good open field tackle. When they continually threw the swing pass to their backs and receivers, and we made some great tackles. They've got a third and one at the 45. There Martavius comes up and makes a big hit for no first down there. And that was a big stop for our defense. Back of the shotgun. We were, we were, we gave three him three. Three again. Watch Steve Brumball right there get blocked to the ground. He gets up with a three-man rush. You're just not supposed to sack a quarterback with a three-man rush. And when you can play eight in coverage and rush three, uh, get pressure, you've really got some pluses right there. He gets hit again. Nice contact. Look at there. Herman Banks getting in there and uh, had a little contact there. Third and seven. <coughs> Here it comes again. Almost intercepted. Very good. Uh, Takeo Spike. Got his hands on it. Very important the underneath coverage in that, in that coverage. It's almost got an interception there. They kicked the field goal. Here comes old Fred. Right before the half, we were just, you know, you run the ball, but all of a sudden you get 25-yard run, and so we try to jump out there and throw a pass, maybe get a field goal, maybe get some flow our way, but didn't quite have enough time and go off the field 7-6 to six, and really a very, very tough ball game. We're going to have to Don't find out. Don't feel very good. Made. No, you have to come out there and find out what you made off second half. We'll be back in just a minute. Time now for the Tiger of the Game, presented by J&M Bookstore. J&M, Auburn's Tiger of the Bookstore. After first half, well, I, I'm sure you had some things to say. Well, we went back and did, did the very best things we do at Auburn right now, and that's uh, getting in the shotgun, throwing the football offensively. But defensively, again, we, we shut them down. Defensively, had a magnificent second half, uh, holding them, I don't think, to... 30-so total offensive yards. It wasn't a whole lot. This turned into a total passing game in the second half. Well, really, we said, well, we decided we would go with our best uh, uh, plan of attack, and so that's all we decided to do. Stop them on that so Auburn gets the ball and they do something with it. Well, we had a long drive. We had about an 85-yard drive, the first drive, passing the football. Damien Craig, I think, if you had to have a, a, a drive and it, and it was critical, you'd pass with Damien Craig, and so that's, that's what we're doing. That's the 40 here. There's a nice play to Carson Bailey across the middle. And, uh, and moves the ball to midfield. And we began to isolate the middle linebacker. You'll see some throws Lose to Rusty seven here. This is second and 17 now. Got Beautiful a throw play. here to, to uh, Hicks Poor on the, uh, we call it a flag route, uh, a little corner route, a flag route. And a uh, nice throw and catch there, Damien. Looking, reading the field real well. You'll see us hit the tailback some here. They started doubling, uh, putting three defensive backs on the wide out, both wide receivers, and leaving the, the tailback one-on-one -on -one with the inside backer. And that's when you go to him. You and, can't uh, see it, but Robinson makes a great block here for Tyrone. There it is. It's, it, right, it's the second one. The first one was the defensive back of the second mm -hmm. in the uh, end zone. He blocked, mm -hmm. and then he came back one after the other. With good score. It makes you feel a little better now. You're up by uh, eight points, but still not enough. There's a swing pass that we just played it so well. Uh, Martavis Houston making some good open field tackles. I thought he had his best tackling day he's had this year. We lose the ball on a fumble, and then they're here they go again. Well, they get it back at midfield, they don't do a thing with it. They throw, they throw the flare pass, and again, it's frustrating because we drop into coverage, give them the flare pass, but when they do throw it, we, we converge on it for no gain. We did a good job of giving the flare pass. Ricky Neal giving the, hitting, hitting the uh, 
receiver there as he caught the ball. They run a, a little crossing series there that we covered very well. There's Jimmy Brumball and, and uh, Charles Dorsey causing the fumble. This was one I thought we had the ball. The official was so quick to give it to their quarterback. He didn't have the ball. Uh, Takeo had the ball, and I was disappointed that, that uh, we didn't get that one back. Here's the next drive, uh, and Hicks Ford running for a good first down. But again, we started these two drives back within around 10-yard line. We made some chicken game errors, but, but it, was, it was strictly a decision to fair catch or not fair catch, and we'll get that corrected. Nice catch and throw uh, with uh, Tyron Goodson. He's really doing it. But doing the drive a good job. stalls, and now watch this punt. This is what I tell you. This is a super job. The average that uh, uh, Jared Holmes had was, was perfect because we didn't want any more yardage on that punting average. Than what we got. His kickoffs were magnificent. His kickoffs were magnificent. Not a return. He kept them inside the 10 twice on punts. He only had one uh, punt that wasn't a real good, the very first punt that they had field position. And we had a punt partially blocked. This was a third and eight out of the end zone. Good job. Oh, almost broken up. Almost, uh, almost touchdown. Getting a good feel for the rhythm of the quarterback. The secondary is getting a good feel for his rhythm. Right, Damien's here's, back on. Here this, comes some football schizophrenia here. All right, for look, a while. they intercept and have possession. Then we make him fumble. And they knock it through the end zone. That's the safety. There's a way you look at it. When you have possession. And you have to call time out to get the rule. The well, they, decision they, change. they had given them the ball on the 20-yard line going the other way. And I knew they couldn't do that because if they intercepted it, then it went out of the end zone. What, so they, well, we uh, kind of got a timeout called and, and got them to change it. If they would have gotten the play run, they could not have gone back and changed it. But it, then they get it back. Well, we just, this is one of the things you try to work on. Every phase of your kicking game, a punt after a safety that, that shanks and goes short. That's something we have you. You work on onside kick, you work on punt, kickoff. But this one was something that, that tailed away, and we made a poor mistake there. But defense rises to the occasion again. Another sack there of Jimmy Brumbaugh. And again, these aren't six- and seven-man rushes here. This is just four-man rushes and three-man rushes. Here comes the turnover. There's they're trying to throw a pass. Ryan Taylor robs it out. Ricky Neal gets a hit. Then Ryan Taylor causes the fumble and gets the ball back. What a fine job there, Ricky Neal and Ryan Taylor. On the, on the, that was the fake reverse pass, deep uh, pass, that they were trying to pull on our defense. We come back here, get the ball right back down to Rusty Williams, working on their inside backer. Nice job there. And you're going to see Damien right here read the blitz and throw, a, throw to and our tight end. Watch the blitz come oh, right at both sides. He reads it, ooh. just lays a pass. Kevin McLeod sets there, runs it down. Oh, gets it down. Not a touchdown pass, but about a 30-yard pass. And we go to Big Fred uh, Beasley to bull it in for the, for the touchdown here to kind of put the game out of reach. We've had so many tough losses last year. You know, we never think of this as being out of reach. I mean, that was, we're, we're sitting there. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get comfortable anymore. Well, and I think that's probably good. We don't ever take a win for granted. And, uh, and I thought they, they moved their, so when they put their second team quarterback in, I said, Dad, gum it. This game, maybe it is close to over. Show one more defensive play on a magnificent defensive day. No well, touchdowns. There he is. Held him to two field a good job. No touchdowns. You know, we have not, it's interesting to note that we have not had a shutout against SC school, school for seven years. And then all of a sudden we've had two out of the last three shutouts, or no touchdown games, and that's a great credit to the defensive coaching staff and all those players on defense. And we'll be back for some final comments in just a minute. Pay-per-view for homecoming against Louisiana Tech at 1 o'clock Saturday, and the Auburn Network, if you like that good audio side, will be on the air at 11 o'clock. Coach, these guys will put the ball up what, 50, 60 times? They've thrown it 60 in one game this year. They'll throw it every town. Uh, we need to finally establish some control, ball control, to keep it away from their offense. So it's going to be a big homecoming. We hope you can make the game. If not, we hope you can join us back here on the Auburn Football Review next Sunday at this time. So we'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for joining us today. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by the following is an Auburn Network production. Back to throw Rete. They're blitzing. He throws. It's intercepted by Spikes at the 40. Spikes at the 45. He's at midfield. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. Takeo Spikes at the 10. The 5. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! Deep snap to Craig. He's looking. He's looking. He's throwing. Goodson has it in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! <laughs> Let's enjoy, let's enjoy this win, men. Uh, we came out and acted like, acted, acted like a, a real good football team.
We took care of business. We didn't wait for the 15th round to knock them out. And we finally ran the ball late. We just didn't tell everybody we are going to do it late. They thought we were going to do it early. But it was a great job. Defense, again, that team right there, uh, you keep them out of the end zone. You keep them out of the end zone. Something, they, they do something good, you don't, you, don't, you don't let it get to you. You come right back and shut them down. Now let's get ready for, dedicate ourselves for uh, seven days, six, six days is about uh, 18 hours of preparation. Six days, that's 18 hours of preparation. Because uh, we have wonderful talent. And man, you, you guys, you can do it. You can do it, not a doubt in my mind, you can do it. It'll all be done this week at our hard work. is the Auburn Football Review with... And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers on homecoming go 6-0. Workman-like 49-13 win over Louisiana Tech. Coach, this team seems to know what they want to do, and they go out and do it every week. Well, this was time I really thought our plan worked. We planned to come out and throw the ball every time, throw it out of the shotgun, utilize our best offensive threat, get ahead of them quickly, get ahead of them early, take the pressure off of our defense, and that's what happened. And then we went to our running game. We put just the young DeMontre Carter in and were able to spend a quarter running the football for 190 yards of rushing. It worked the script, and I think it may have been a boring football game, but I think Auburn fans deserved a boring game because we've had some tight ones, and we're probably going to have another one. You're, uh, you're so right, Coach. Uh, interesting thing happened on the opening kickoff. Jared Holmes kicked off, and a defender, uh, shall we say, mugged him. We uh, got Jared's take on that in the dressing room. I have a friend on the op opposite team I played with at junior college, and it just so happened my last year there, I had the same thing had occurred there, and I chased him down the field, and we both got uh, penalties on us, so kind of got me out of my game, that game back there, and he kind of mentioned to their coaches to try it again, and that's what they came and did, except he kind of stayed on me and kept hitting me, so I had to, had to give him something back. That was a big turnaround when you got the ball and took it back to the touchdown. Yeah, that's something I've been waiting for all year, and uh, Martavis just kind of, he told me, he, you know, just told him to be aware of the screen, and I did, and before I even knew it, the ball was thrown straight to me, so I just picked it off and just tried to take it back for six. Everything he was billed to be, wasn't it? Oh, yes, he was. Uh, that quarterback's so excellent, poise. I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't panic, he didn't do anything like that. And the biggest thing that kind of hurt us in the, the in-between route, so, I mean, we, we handled that, we uh, adjusted to it. No, and we came out successful, so that was a plus for us. Next week. I mean, it's a big game. That's all I can say. We go, we're going to go home tonight, look at the game on television. Then we're going to prepare this week, and we're going to come out with the best we have. It was very frustrating for the whole defense. Um, not like the other guys, you know, dropped back. We had time to get to the ball, but he was just throwing it, you know, right at the snap. So it was just hard for us to get, the, get it set. Oh, it felt real good. I just got a little tired at the end, you know, and I stretched, though. Tired? Yeah. You were so excited, huh? Yeah, I was real excited. You get that fumble back? Yeah, I got it back. Well, I felt that we could have ran it from um, the opening snap because Bowden had said ahead of time that we was going to come out and we were going to go out in four wides and just pass the ball. And later on in the second half, we were going to start running. Worried about next week? Well, we just have to come in. We have to play hard. Um, this year, I feel that we don't have to play the perfect game to be flawed. I think we're on that level, but we just have to play hard and give it 100% on every play. And um, hopefully, uh, this is going to be a tough game, the SEC game, the number one team in the nation. We're just going to come out and give it all we got. Time now for this week's Win Dixie Tiger Quiz. One of Auburn's most celebrated All Americans led the SEC in receiving in 1956. He was later an All Pro for the Los Angeles Rams and Minnesota Vikings. And that's today's Win Dixie Tiger Quiz, presented by Nabisco. We get into the game now, Coach. I don't think the fans were quite as excited about uh, Louisiana Tech as they were <laughs> Central Florida, you know? I did not see any sincerity in any of our fans when they said, boy, we better take this one seriously. Yeah. But that's expected. I mean, that's for coaches and players to do is to make sure we don't overlook an opponent. And this senior class has done that. That's right. I think that's right because everybody was ready for Florida. I don't uh, see you getting any hugs there. I see the quarterback. Coach. Well, I'm getting too old. Uh, Damien <laughs> deserves all the hugs. And that Tiger walk's always great. There's young Damien there. Uh, uh, with a poster child there for um, Montgomery. Was, for Montgomery, from Montgomery, his mother, and it was so nice for him to get out in the field. And here we come out and uh, uh, for home, can we able to dress over 100 players? This is a non-conference game, and uh, um, it, it was great crowd, except for the student section. I'm going to say that now because there was nobody there uh, for the homecoming game, hardly as you can see. But it was a great crowd and a kickoff. Uh, 
Our kicker got mugged that play, but he kicked five out of seven out of the end zone. They had a perfect 80 play drive. They came out with some different formations. We, we were having to react to it, and really, they did a good job. Had me scared to death, but and they were given quick throws. Uh, we rush three a lot. They make a great throw. They've gone about eight plays, 80 yards for a touchdown. And I think it kind of made us uh, concerned. Us, but then they go for two uh, and don't make it. They, they really were doing some different things. Yeah. Well, here's a short kick they were afraid of. They were all hoping we would mess up and they'd get a big play. We'd make a smart play there, Roman Nelson. What that did, it just gave us good field. I thought it was very, they made some poor choices in their kicking game. They gave us the ball at midfield every time. Of course, Damien, a great throw to Fred Beasley. What they did, they rushed three people and did not rush them at all thinking that Damien would be impatient and scramble too mm -hmm. soon. But what he did, he sat and sat and sat. Sometimes and you can eight see, seconds. Eight you can see him seconds. sit. Watch him just sit. Sit there. Don't go. Don't rush. Don't get impatient. And find you a big-time throw. <laughs> and that's exactly what they hoped would not happen. But I thought it would show a lot of poise. There are times when those three rushers are so good, you do run early. You run get eight yards on the ground. That's a great team. Three plays in a row right here. They, they get down to the 30, but watch Boy, the Boy, a big here. tackle by Brad Ware. They do so many screens, so many different types. You, it scares you because they get blockers downfield. This is a big big series here now. As they come back into our territory, we see Brad Ware will come in, make another last-second deflection there. Again, stopping the drive. And that again. sets up this play. Well, this is the one. That right there was so critical because they try their screen over the middle. The linemen go downfield to block. We recognize the coverage. Certain formations give it away. The Keo spikes intersection outruns the running backs, all the running backs, and scores 65 yards. I thought that play pretty much got the game going because what happened from here on out, it was Auburn, 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 Auburn. Great job defensively. Uh, uh, um, something you don't really like to be in the shotgun for your defense and no huddle because it puts them on the field all the time. But if you score every time, there's pressure. There's pressure by our defense. And again, we could not sack him but twice. But we were in his face all day and he got hit a lot. Here's another fine return with Marquise out. Uh, young Clifford Robinson's probably just as talented as Marquise at returning punch. He's got great speed and he's a former tailback and uh, gives us a real good one two punch in our kicking game as a kickoff return and punt return game. First and 10 at the 45. They rush four this time and do a little better job, but there's the wide open to uh, Hicks four, three catches for 75 yards. Did a great job. One touchdown pass. Uh, continues to do well. All the receivers, uh, I thought, ran and caught well. Third and seven. Pass blocking was just, uh, Coach Trigger had a pass blocking just super. Damon, they now, now just now get your little jog, uh, jog in for a first down. Uh, but he stays in the pocket well. And, uh, they, and after looking at the film, Damien, you know, all three of his interceptions were, believe it or not, were not things that concerned me as much now that I saw them. Great oh, block. Boy, great block and power running by Fred Beasley. Running game was just what we wanted it to be for this game. Running out of the shotgun, we wanted to make sure we, we caught him off guard, made big yards. Late in the game, got in the eye. Good job. Everybody's excited. That's the one way you don't get a celebration penalty. There's when old you, Coach Pete Jenkins. Coach Pete Jenkins working the run. Here comes Mark Washington. Mark is great sack there. Two of our sacks uh, against the quarterback. Got them out of field goal range and pushed them back even further. That puts them in third and long here, third and 16. Yeah, it forced them. They thought we were going to blitz. We were able to disguise and fake a blitz. They throw the hot route for a five-yard gain on third and 16. Thought, thought that was an outstanding job. Defense again coming off the field. But but here we go back to the no huddle situation and like i was saying earlier if you're going to no huddle you better score because you're leaving your defense on the field mm. and uh i don't care um how long the defense on the field if we're up if we're scoring 45 points and a half or 35. great job by damon to scramble for a first down and uh again we're keeping the offense going keeping the keeping the game do not allow them to huddle up on defense hicks four again they they blitz the free safety up to the line of scrimmage Left him one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Um, and Damien made an uh, outstanding read. Here comes the touchdown. Here's a rollout. He's looking pretty. He actually hits his third receiver. Carson runs real well when he gets that ball in his hands. And, uh, he has a fumble later. But it was an effort. Uh, it was on great extra effort, but he still can't fumble. As you'll see later on, but this is a great. Another. This is the one kick he doesn't kick off the end zone. They're so sure that it's going to go to the end zone, he didn't cover it. And we get a big hit right there on the six-yard line. Jason Bray, Tyrese Williams and Marlon Taylor. Great job of, of working special teams along with Terrence Proud of it. Here comes uh, a turnover. A lot of pressure. There, there it is. There's the fumble. Uh, but the linemen kept pushing. Uh, we know Grumbaugh caused it. And uh, looks like uh, Dorothy Jeff, or Jeff, Jeff Dunlap, Dunlap got the cover. Maybe both down that too. First play, right back in the end zone, touchdown. And uh, again, we were working very much uh, continuing to improve our vertical passing game. I'm not as big 
I don't think he hurt people as much with a horizontal hookup type passing game. Good pressure by Ricky Neal. You saw the late delayed linebacker blitz and uh, got a good hit there on the quarterback. And he got two clips of good shots. Third and ten. There's Jeremy Banks rushing, as you see. There's a great, uh, almost uh, maybe throw away by a uh, big uh, Charles Dorsey. And we're back on offense. This one right here, you can't go back and see it. This is a, this interception that Damien was real disappointed. It looks like the defender hit his arm as he threw because we did have Jeremy Hand open. And uh, we got the one interception there that, that hurt us. But what happens, our defense comes back. Did a great job, came right back. Martavis Houston, I thought, had a better mm -hmm. day. Really tackled well and moved around well. But the defense saved the day. We had about a minute left and a half. Uh, and there's Brad Webb making a nice interception. I don't know who he was throwing to, but he makes a nice interception. And then we run the clock out. So there, instead of us having a, an interception that caused us points before half, defense takes it right back and gets us out of the game. 35 to 7 at six and a half time. Great compliment to the Auburn offense, the Auburn defense. And it has been that way in so many games so far. We'll be back in just a minute. It was a tiger of the game. The turnover, the interception, and return for touchdown pretty much deflated uh, Louisiana Tech and finished off the game in my mind. Congratulations to Takeo Spikes. Back in just a minute. Tiger of the game. Two in the third quarter when uh, got the two turnovers. And well, I really was. I was disappointed because, one, uh, um, uh, we, we, when we turned the ball over, it was clearly I, I called a pass on a one-yard line, which signaled to the quarterback, hey, coach, is not... He's thinking about scoring touchdown passes, not thinking about the best thing right there. I think that was just one to myself. Uh, and then they score, they drive all the way down the field. Uh, you'll see that. This is where it comes at. We take the ball right down the field as we to the one-yard line. And at this point, 35 to 7, I, have, I was in a passing mode, and I said, well, I'm going to get Damien another touchdown. When I do that signal to the quarterback, let's get a touchdown pass. And so he makes a very poor decision, but I think I caused that. So really, that's what I was saying earlier. His three, uh, his three interceptions, one was deflected by a defensive lineman. One was on a deflection where he threw a deep ball. His arm got caught, and that one was pretty much on me. And so this is what we had happened. But our defense, and they come down, and they had a big, long drive and went for a score, and that concerned me. And then we fumbled again. But I never felt bad about the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. I never felt that there was going to be a change in the outcome of the game. I just was disappointed that we had let almost a, 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 a blow, blow them out situation mm -hmm. get by us, and we'd have to go back and play along. And then you could have gotten to what you wanted to do. Yeah, with, I could have uh, held a second half by formation work. Yeah. But here's Nesty Carson Bell is fighting for extra yards, but he let somebody rip the ball out. So two quick turnovers. Uh, now the defense comes strong here. This was this is where we just reestablished. Defense came up, and now they're on our yard. They're real tight down there. Great play again. Pressure on the quarterback. Another play by Brad Ware. But you'll see it really. They they come back here. I think they have a third down. They run. Take a quarterback. They run a quarterback draw. You'll see the line closed up. to Keo Spikes uh, dropping for a loss and it forces them to kick a field goal. But watch Charles Dorsey in the interior line fight through, get a left hand up, and deflect the football. Probably kicked a little low, but that pretty much ended that mm -hmm. extra little rally by Louisiana Tech. That right there, that defensive play, ended the rally, uh, and we take it right back down and yeah. score again. Third and 12 on this play. Fifth and Robinson, where he runs a 15-yard route. This was, the, this was the route we ran short against South Carolina on third and 12, fourth and 12, and didn't get it. Shows his running skill. He's one of the athletes that we have not seen as much of his grasp or ability. But we'll see a lot more later as we get the ball more to him. Second and ten out at the 16. Nice throw to just a little little flat route. Great effort by, good job by Tyrone Goodson. F second effort gets in the end zone. 42 to 13. Uh, more all-star numbers for uh, Ty. We had that, another over 100-yard game. Defense now was continue to try to put pressure on that quarterback. A little bit of pressure. He throws it away. So they tried to fake the screen and throw the deep ball uh, as we came up to cover the screen. That is a good look. One of the stadium. prettiest stadiums in America. It really is beautiful weather. Here's the Montre Carter. You'll see how hard he runs and slashes, fumbles the ball, scared to death. Well, not scared, but nervous, I should say. <laughs> not scared. And the buddy, he was so nervous about what Coach Allison would say to him. He fought and got that ball back. Then third and one, we had to have it. Beasley goes to tailback. He played fullback. He played tailback. And he played shotgun halfback. And, uh, uh, and wide out, all the way wide receiver. So he we utilized him in a lot of ways. And uh, we faked the, the, the sprint draw. We're going to throw a, a bomb. And uh, Damon sees it covered up. They're really so tired. What happens when you get into a no huddle situation and their defense stays on the field, mm -hmm. they get tired. Mm -hmm. And Damon brings it down, gets, gets the first down. Not just a little run, run. Outside, inside, back out there for DeMontre gets a seven yard touchdown run. And uh, Good way to finish off the day. We run a little bit more. We get our Ben Leard. We also get in late. 
Uh, got some other running back some carries. Defense, oh, just get the ball, deflect the ball right there. Good job by Marcus Washington of deflecting the route. Probably could have been a lateral uh, fumble, but too close to call. Defense comes through, running right there. Good job. Great, great picture of Ryan Taylor stripping the ball out and then picking it up. It's just a good, smart, he's a very smart football player. And uh, just grab the ball and rip it out. The back, we're back with fighting for extra, extra yards. Our cheerleaders will do a good job. Our band, we're, we're a lot of fun to to all day. There's Demontre coming on the counter. Demontre said he was tired. I guess he was so emotionally well, His tired. heart was beating so yeah. fast. His heart was beating so fast before he got in. <laughs> he, he had already played a game before he got in. A nice run by Telly Embry. We're seeing some good stuff there. It was nice to see him get a breakout. We did a good power at the end for the first wow. down. Wow. That's how you can hold on to the ball and continue to get first downs late in the game to, to, to run the clock out when you do stuff like that. Ben Laird gets his first completion. A little pass to Brad Bourne. Was playing tight end and got a catch right there. And good to see that one for a, for a good six, seven yard game. And to keep that, Dustin Baker there uh, uh, gets a uh, uh, kid's graduation. And we, uh, we're glad to go into our homecoming dressing room as a winner. Back in just a moment. To be said about next week, it's just a super big football game. It'll be on CBS, and if the Auburn Radio Network will be on the air at 12.30. So join them and get ready for Auburn, Florida next week. We'll see you with the replay on Sunday. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by... ...with Carson Bailey for 70 yards and a touchdown. Tossed in four field goals from Jared Holmes. And the Tigers have their seventh win of the season. You have flashbacks every time you get one of these games, but there's a difference between this team and uh, and the young kids that played last year. And, and uh, I, I keep wanting to give Arkansas the credit and not say we didn't play well here, didn't play well there. They had a lot of fight and didn't ever quit. But uh, offense didn't help much early, and uh, defense kind of gave up being on the field too much late. And uh, somehow we all hung together, and uh, we took a lot of time off on our last offensive drive, and the defense kept them from scoring. More from Terry Bowden coming up in just a few minutes on the Auburn Football Review. Auburn's win yesterday was not enough to put the Tigers back in the top ten. Not much change in the new poll. Nebraska still number one, followed by Penn State, Florida State, Michigan, and North Carolina. Six through ten, Florida, Washington, Tennessee, Ohio State, and Washington State. Auburn stays at number 11. The coaches poll also has the Tigers at number 11. Georgia up to number 14, and LSU is number 16. Didn't work out for Penn State. Eubanks and Sydney are split to either side. The give is going to be to Branch, and he ran into Brubaugh. He fumbled the ball. Auburn picks it up at the 10, to the 5. He is gone. That is Marcus Washington. Touchdown, Auburn! Trips to the near side, wide out to the far side. One setback, retreating his turner. They're after him. They hit him. He's going down. A big sack. Brad Ware on the blitz. Taking the deep snap, drifting back to throw, looking, going long down the far side. This one is knocked away and is incomplete, and that is the ball game. Hey, I remember a year ago, hey, I remember a year ago when that stuff don't happen, man. It's yeah. good luck. Let's get started. Yeah. Let's go home happy. Let's go on happy. Got a lot of teams today that ain't gonna go home with a victory. And we come into a, somebody else's homecoming. And they play a great game. And they fight hard. You can you compliment them afterwards on the heart that people say they don't have. They got it at Arkansas still. But man, you came out and you won. Amen. No matter what happened, you came out and won. And that's a, that that'll be as sweet as any of them right there. Because they could have you could have come back and said, no, something, no, something bad's gonna happen like last year, but didn't. And the great thing is, man, we play, on our off day, offense, we're off a little bit today. We don't, we don't have a good day today. The defense stands strong. Stands strong. It's a little bit of toughness in the last quarter. I mean, that's a good one. Let's go home. And let's get Mississippi State. This is the Auburn Football Review. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers avoided one of those hog killings up in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas last night. Auburn 21, Arkansas, Auburn 26, Arkansas 21. I think back a year ago, 
the Tigers were losing those close games. Now they're winning them, Coach. Well, it is so hard to go to a, uh, uh, an SEC opponent and play at their stadium homecoming. Uh, and uh, this was upset special week. Arkansas scared me to death. Upset special after Florida, and I'm glad we held on. Offensively, we did not play well at all. Defensively, three, three and a half quarters, very, very well. Enough with the kicking game to win the game. I'm happy we had that good win. And let's go into the Auburn dressing room now and uh, talk to some happy young men. Arkansas has a lot of heart. I take my hat off to them because they made it a 60-minute ball game. We, we knew it was going to be a 60-minute ball game. And, man, I'm just happy for the win. I just made a good lick on them, and I just I saw the ball on the ground. I just picked it up and ran to the end zone. They may not have seen all that important when it happened, but, boy, did it turn out to be a big one. Yes, sir. It was a big one. Out of nowhere, didn't it? Right down. Let me see here. I got a, I got a stack. And then I got a college fumble, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I basically would pay you 4 1 to 4 1 and 4 2 rushing the passes, though. I came out and did what I had to do, and I think I did it pretty good today. I just um, followed my first key. The coach just told me to follow the center, and it would take me right to the ball. And I just followed the center, and he took me right to the ball. <laughs> just playing all the football hard. But we just really got to just sit together and go back uh, Monday and fix all the little nicks and bruises and get, get everything straight that, that we messed up. And uh, come back and get ready for Mississippi State. I just broke up on the ball. I felt real good about it. You know, I wish he would have threw it a little bit higher so I could have took you back to the end zone. They kept coming out with a whole lot of formations, you know, and all. So coaches told us to be boys, don't give up to the deep play. Our defense is playing great football right now. Offensively, we're just making too many mental mistakes um, to put us in bad positions. So hopefully, we can correct those things. But, um, we're doing the same thing we've been doing all year long. We're just making too many mental mistakes right now. Things been a little quiet in the kicking department, but you never know when the time's gonna come. I tell you what, this was this was a shocker tonight to have uh, just about as many field goals as I had all year. Uh, but we came through, you know, never missed a beat. Uh, had a little, you know, close calls, but, uh, you know, we, when we have a snapper like Brent Turner and a holder like Jeremy Zills, you know, I, I, you can't have any, any better teammates than that in the country. Time now. We'll uh, get into the game now, and uh, it looks like every time we go to Arkansas, the weather's bad, Coach. Well, I tell you, we've had snow, we've had uh, storms, almost uh, tornadoes, and lightning, but it turned into a great three quarters of weather. Uh, our Auburn fans, great Tiger Walk. I don't know how you can go 15 hours and be there out in that rain, but my hat's off to the wonderful, there's my wife there's Cheryl coming through with us. and uh, With Ralph and Coley Ralph and Melvin. And, Coley and Melvin. And there's our fans up there, don't you nuts, and uh, the crazies were there, and we could hear them all game, and we appreciate you. Here we come out there facing the rain, but we were very smooth. I didn't know where to, how to come across this field. Their band was on there, and they kept directing us and stuff. Um, we come out and have a real smooth drive. They came out and played. We went to Montre caught a very first play, but they called holding there on Geno James. And again, it's just not a big, bad hot. I don't know why they uh, uh, are so strict on that play, because again, that's the type of holding where, that usually doesn't get called. But we come it here, though, with a great pass. Control. We overcome it with a great pass. There's a Hicks four. And we make a nice drive here. We, uh, we end up with a field goal down the road, but you'll see a nice drive. But they're playing more zone. They opened up playing a, a, a three and four man rush with zone coverage. And we, that's something we do a good job of picking apart. And the uh, second half, you'll see a much more blitz package uh, that gave us some problems. Failed to convert on a third and three here. So Jared is in for the first of four field goals. On the I tell you, I was glad that, uh, glad that he was hot because offensively, we were not sharp enough to put the ball in the end zone. The defense gave us the ball repeatedly. So many big plays on defense. Oh, defense game. just played super and very smart and uh, 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 did a great job there of, of, of nailing uh, Arkansas. It was a good way to go. Uh, Leonardo Carson stringing the play out and everybody else coming up to help make plays. Of course, the Keo Spikes. Headed for an all-conference year, I believe. Good stretch out. Look at Jimmy Brumbaugh stretching it out. And there's Ricky Neal coming back to make the tackle. But the linemen are stretching out, spring up the linebackers to make the hit. And the def def defense is doing an Third outstanding and job. Third long here. Good hit. Bobby Daffin there, a uh, fifth-year senior out of Viger in, in Mobile. Uh, da uh, there he is making a nice hit on the quarterback. Had a fumble, caused fumble, and a big hit. Two penalties stall this drive, and well, here's the punt. Well, we've had over 100 yards and penalties, and we've really got to do a better job there. But... Uh, Five times he, he punted the ball inside the 20. There's another one forcing them long distances to run the football. And here's one of the game plays here. Jimmy, perfect form tackle. Then Marcus Washington picks up the fumble. 10 to nothing, we're winning. And the defense has put us in a position.
to put this game away. You'll see wow. later where we do wow. not get it. But that's a great shot there in footage uh, uh, by our cameraman to pick that up and uh, show Marcus Washington taking the end zone. And right now, Arkansas, they're feeling like things are just not going their way this year. Second this, quarter. This is where the offense should have done more, but we can't get anything going. There's a great third down deflection by uh, uh, the defensive lineman. I'm not sure. Charles Dorsey. Charles Dorsey deflected the ball. Fourth down. Here comes a stun. Look at, look at. Oh, there's Brad Ware and uh, Keo coming in to get a fourth down sack. And now instead of them being on our 30-yard line, we've got the ball on the 50 going the other way. But another holding penalty stopped the drive. Here another holding. It's just we could not slip. A good hit here. Uh, good coverage there uh, by our look, Larry Casher. Made a big hit there. Made one first down, and now they have the ball again. We just made one first down in our possession. Here's the big intercept. Now, that's again. Now, we get the ball inside the 20. And the defense has given us the ball inside 20. Well, we can, we can go up 17 to nothing, but they hold us to a field goal and to 13 points. And so they've given us the ball down there several times, and we get field goals. Hard to put those things out of your mind, too, is it? really is. I just, I mean, when I go back Monday, we're going to, I think our players are going to hear about it on offense a lot a chance to put a game away like we did against uh, La Tech and did against Central Florida, but Arkansas was a little bit too good of a football team. Two big turnovers coming here that's going to put them back in the game. Well, here's the big first. Here we are. We're about to go up 20. Here's the ball caught at the 20, down to the 3. Young freshman doesn't cover the ball up. He gets it stripped away. Now they've got the ball. So it must be on the 3, first and 3, with a chance to go up 20 to nothing. Watch how what we have. Now defense comes through. We hold them again. They get maybe nothing there. They get nothing, and they're going to punt back to us. It's a great defensive effort. So instead of being 20 to nothing, uh, we Started still held 48. them, and they punt. Now, here we go. Damian makes a poor decision. It's a three-step drop. He's trying to make, fumbles the football, doesn't keep it away. It was only 50 seconds left, and give their defense a touchdown. This was probably the momentum play of the game. In other words, instead of the game being over at halftime, mm -hmm. this created a four-quarter ball game, and uh, we just got to, got to not let that happen. And, uh, um, uh, we've got to work on that. If we're going to call plays like that at the end, we've got to work on it. And again, I, I need to, I'll get over it. I'm still kind of mad about the whole thing. And so we'll get, we'll get that straightened out. We'll be back uh, in just a moment. Third quarter now, and uh, you almost put it away, but just not quite. Well, it was field goals instead of touchdowns. Defense comes out strong again and, and uh, stops them. And we uh, have a chance to put the ball game away, as you'll see. Uh, we drive the ball down, but we uh, don't get points. Defense stops them. They're punting again. We were only 3 of 13 on third down conversions. Nice return here by Marquise Cooper. Good uh, to see him uh, making good decisions. And well, he got away from the ball, and he, he, he uh, moved, moved himself away, put his hand down and shook it to move himself. But nobody get near the ball. Coach Ford thought it was a fair catch, to him, but it wasn't. Here's Demontre Carter working back outside. Nice job by the tight end there of working his blocks. They took about nine yards. Good run on first down. Here's a second and three with Carter carrying again. Well, he had about 12 carries and had some decent carries. Again, we didn't, haven't had any runs over 11 yards. And again, you'd like to see a 60 or 70 or something like that. Then you're going to have good total yardage days. But there's some improvement there. And we get that toss sweep work back in. But we get stalled down. Get a sack and a delay of game penalty. And then kick the field goal. Kick the field goal. Just weren't sinking. The penalties killed us again. Uh, you can't do much offense with that kind of penalties unless you have big plays. Charles Dorsey, he's seeing, he's playing with his eyes. He's mm. just followed the quarterback and then with his eyes picked up the reverse and was able to make a play. That was a big play because they have to overcome. Third and seven now. Great coverage there. They're trying to throw one-on-one -on -one against our freshman Larry Casher, but he does a good job. But they missed the field goal. But they were 12 of 21 on third down conversions as opposed to us three of 13. It's, we didn't, we don't play like a very good football team to be three of 13. But there's a good run there. Uh, uh, again, he's trying to reestablish the toss sweep. Big play, third and five. Third and five, nice job throwing there. And they, they blitzed the free safety, and their corner played uh, outside leverage, thinking there was a safety there. And Carson gets the celebration. You know, regardless of whether fans or coaches uh, wish that wasn't a celebration, that's an obvious celebration. That's a clear rule. Do not dive in the end zone. Never dive in the end zone. It's illegal to dive in the end zone. And it's a 15-yard penalty. We made the extra point to kill. Boy, that's illegal, too, sometimes. Hitting somebody that bad hard <laughs> ought to be criminal. He does a good hit by him and uh, uh, had another outstanding football game. They got a first the, down here at the 32. Nice coverage there by uh, uh, Antoine Nodal. They, they worked on Antoine, did a good job there. Now we're getting the four-man rush, trying to get something on their quarterback. Good pressure there is going to come. That's a good job. There's a cause fumble by Bobby Daffin. 
Boy, it could have been picked up. We got the fumble now. Here's the ball. They give it to us inside the 20. Last time they gave it to us on, on Larry Cash intercepts, we got a field goal. We try to run it twice, get about one yard. This is where we're just not strong enough, and uh, we don't get much going there. We, we get one yard there. Uh, We'll run again for another yard and on third and ten. Drop a touchdown pass as the fourth quarter begins, and then Jarrett uh, kicks the fourth field goal. Of kicks his field goal. Uh, we'll drop the field goal. Remember, we dropped the pass. Colin Good from over the middle to the one yard line, and then we kick another field goal. But 26 to seven, uh, though it was ugly, it was should have been enough right here. And this is where you've got to get credit to Arkansas. They come through with repeated uh, uh, third down completion. Uh, when you have young defensive backs, when when You've got to keep a team from scoring. They tend to play softer, which is the young guys, you know, it's probably better than playing too tight. But when you have confidence back there, which these young men will get when they get older, they'll play it at, at the proper distance. And, and uh, again, they just uh, 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 left that open. There's the pass they threw and played against Alabama uh, to beat Alabama. And they hit it against us on a fourth and 10. And now they kick it onside. Look at Jer uh, Jeremy uh, Hand. Uh, Jeremy Hand, that was a great play by our senior engineering student. Uh, uh, from Auburn has a big play there to get us the ball back and now we're moving the ball down here Great run there. Oh, it just falls down. You can see he just he's so close to making some big plays uh, For Demontre Carter, but some good blocking there third and one watch Gino left tackle here move back third and one That's just not good. I hope you know I don't know if somebody made a sound on defense or what but now we had to punt and this wasn't disastrous because we're still up two scores with about seven minutes left or eight or and they get the ball on their 13, 12 yard line. So, you know, we've punted them down to the 12 yard line. They've got to go, uh, what's it? 88, 10. Here's another 88 yards. Here's the third and 10. He throws right into our bed. One on one, we had the guy covered man to man. They throw right to him. But we're playing deep safeties and underneath coverage and leaving some holes in there. They got a break on this play. Uh, the DBs just knock one another off the one ball. One of those deals where everybody just knocks each other off the ball and they get the big touchdown run. But all this does, not only scores, it, it, it scores without taking any time off the clock. And now we've got a ball game because there's about seven, seven minutes, minutes go, yeah. left in the ball game. They've got all the momentum. And here's the key. We have about a five and a half minute drive here. Nice throw there. Nice play on a third down play to, to, to Tyron Goodson. This is what you didn't do last year, Coach, to have the drive to run the clock. Yeah, we, that's, that's been so important. Here's a good five-yard gain by, by Fred Beasley. Uh, we had some good first downs here, and these first downs kept the clock running. And uh, um, I think this was a big play for them, a huge face mask call. Boy, a 15-yard face mask. That's the first down. First down, exactly. And uh, that holds the drive, and we keep it going a little bit longer. But now when we punt it from our own 40 and we punt it high, it comes down. Right they, there. They have only a minute seven left and no timeout. And the seven yard, they lost three timeouts, but I know they would be just wishing they had. Second is ten. He has to run. And they only have about about fifty minute a minute and something minute and seven seconds left. And there he stays in bounds. Great play. We keep him in bounds. The clock is running. running. The clock is running. Here's a third and five. This is a beautiful catch. Beautiful catch. Because I'm telling you, he's covered under and he got hit and held that football. They had to take him off the field, but that was, a, that was a great catch for that young man. That actually helped them set up the play with him. There are 15 Andy. seconds left, I think, and he mm -hmm. scrambles down here with 15 seconds left. And he gets out of bounds, but I think he had to waste so much time, mm -hmm. he gets now there's only seven seconds left. And you're talking about being so far out, you, the Hail Mary cannot even go to the end zone. I believe this is the Hail Mary, isn't it? Yeah. And the Hail Mary right here cannot be thrown. So somebody has to not only have to catch it about 15, they've then got to run it into the end zone because the clock has run out. And then, we put the ball away there. So it made for an exciting game, much too exciting for me. But uh, um, you've got to take my hat off. Going through some adversity, Coach Ford has put together a team that played a great football game and made it uh, tough on us all the way. I'm glad to be coming home 7-1, and one, I'll tell you that. And we'll be back in just a moment. Coach Terry Biden, this will be your ninth straight week of tough competition. I tell you, it doesn't get any easier. Mississippi State, 5-2, and two, a chance for their best start. Uh, in a long time, bowl possibilities. We've got to just fight and play a great football game, and then, then the, the off week would help us out one. But uh, it doesn't get any easier, and uh, uh, everyone's big. Okay, the Auburn Network will be on the air at 11 a. The following is an Auburn Network production. Bobo changing his play, has him in the eye formation. Auburn with a four-man front, and here's a delay to Edwards. Edwards is trying to bounce off a tackler, but he can't do it. He stood up and driven back by Takeo Spike. The lone setback is Beasley. Damien retreats the throw off the play fake. Sets up with time. Fires a pass. Over the middle. Bailey's got it. He breaks away at the 45-50. He's at the 40. The court's the 30. The 20. He's in a foot race to the 10. The 5. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! 
Special win for you, man. It's a special win and a special game. Seniors, I'm so proud for you and of you. Great job, seniors. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Great, appreciate you so much. It's one of the greatest, great games there is. You know what that game is with Georgia now. And that's a special one. It's very special. And, and I told you that we focus on this game. We go to Alabama now, and we're, we're, we're in contention. Yeah. We're, we want that, that we want our goal. That conference championship. <laughs> And we got to go now. We got Alabama. We got it. We got the win, and we got it down to Alabama. We got it down to Alabama. I mean, I'm proud of it. If you'll do the work you did these last two weeks, that'll be enough. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review, the 101st meeting of these two great football programs, and the Tigers bounce back big time, scoring 45. Coach, congratulations to you and the team. Well, we just we needed everybody. The, the, all the credit goes to our football players, how hard they work, the coaches committing themselves, and our fans that uh, were there, so vocal, and we joined together after the game. But to win a game like this on the road, it takes all those parts. Everybody did their part. I'm so glad. I'm so proud. It's amazing what fresh legs and fresh minds will do. You know, I, 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 I don't give it enough credit for the thought that, that you have to be fresh. It was so apparent, Arkansas and Mississippi State, that we weren't uh, doing what we needed to do. And, and, and after the off week, you can see again what happens when you're refreshed uh, uh, and your legs are strong and your arms are strong. It was quite a performance. Let's go to the dressing room now and talk to some of those young men. I played offensive line. They did a great job tonight. And when it was on the line with the last five minutes left in the game, uh, we drove the ball down and got a touchdown. You stuffed it down and threw it for that last touchdown. Yeah, I, yeah, we really did. You know, Craig, to his credit, you know, he came back and had a marvelous game. Coach was telling me I should go out and um, I should just wear him out. And, you know, um, Damien called the play. And, I, and I, all in my mind, I was saying I got to catch this ball and make something happen. I threw a nice pass, I caught the ball and I ran with the kick. Uh, they say we couldn't run the ball, but I, like I said, we knew we could run the ball. You just got to be committed to it, and we showed them tonight on the South Murray team. It, it could be one of those games where the defense can perform where offense didn't, or the defense didn't, didn't perform where the offense did, but uh, we kind of came together, both of us. We gave us some big plays, and we came out with a win. He's, he's one of those big backs where if you don't make the first tackle, you might not get a second chance at him. And we were swarming around the ball, and what we were trying to do is just try to, you know, make that first tackle. When well, I was down and out on the field, he just was there with me, and I know Leo will feel the same way about him. Yeah, that just that just made you guys tougher when Jimmy went out. Yeah, really, you know, we wanted to dedicate this game here to Jimmy because we know we've been out there fighting along with us. But, you know, Jimmy, we want you to get wet, and I hope he'll be there next week for us. Like, like I said, they just came up the ball, and they told me to run hard. They, all, they get that great encouragement, and I just came and followed their block and just read right and just made some happen. It felt good coming back to Georgia, you know, and having a win on our home state. You know, the guys we know, you know, we're seniors now. We can talk about it for the rest of our lives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who caught the pass? Was it Tyrone? Oh, Tyrone. 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 Yeah, I caught the pass. Hey, but we blocked. We blocked. Oh, them. definitely. We've been working pretty hard all week at that blocking, and we just went out and executed, and we got, you know, satisfaction off of it. You know, Coach, I would say it's better than expected. You know, and I saw when Larry made a great break on the ball, and he just tipped it, and the ball was up, so I just tried to catch it. I don't know if it was a, a fumble recovery or an interception. I, I don't know. I really don't know either. It doesn't matter, though, does it? Jimmy went down, it seemed like the defense just went up. Yeah, we had to pull together because, you know, Jimmy went early in the game, so we had to come out and try to make it a slack for him. But he left out of it. A little running game sure does go a long way, though. Oh, that was nice. I was telling people on the sideline, I was like, if we can run the ball down the field, I don't care if I get in the game again. <laughs> it was nice to see him running like that. Time now for get into the game now, Coach. Uh, we've all come to expect great uh, on the road tiger walks, but I won't tell you this one was kind of <laughs> special. I thought the oh, field I, was going to get mugged going through I, this. I, I tell you, our fans were ready. Our fans ready. I mean, Georgia was so pumped up. They just knew where they're going. Cheryl, she's so excited. She went to the Elton John concert Friday night. She got to see Elton John and you beat Georgia. Go, right? I do not go to concerts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, the fans, uh, Tiger girls there, and. Uh, here the players come, and uh, well, I couldn't hardly keep them in the dressing room. It was just, I think, a week off after Mississippi State, and they were ready to play. But uh, they took the ball because they thought they could score. And they did. I mean, this, 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 like, Georgia did not have a bad football game. They had a good football game, and they have a good football team. And they took it right down and the field. We lose Jimmy Brumball in this First too. play of the game, we lost Jimmy Brumball, but the players rallied around that. Critical play here, third down, Damian Craig. Uh, hit picks poor, get the first down, and we're mixing it up. I think we we put the run with the pass. Here's one of the runs we ran. 
Demontre Carter gets off the outside and takes it down uh, inside the red zone. Now, and I think everyone sees that we're going to try to run the football with the passing game. Look and at the line blowing them back. I'm telling you, this they were pumped and ready to go. Well, I think I think the linemen want, wanted me to do some things offensively that would let them be tough, and and because uh, they wanted to be. And there's a touchdown. The quarterback sneak. So important to answer on that. Side. That's right, because immediately that long, that drive has been negated with our uh, our similar drive. And now they're back, and that's where our defense really set the tempo. We get a sack here, but they give the offense field position twice in a row, and we score 10 points. Great sack there by Clinton Reese. Jeff Dunlap, who replaced um, Jimmy Brumbaugh, did a great job. We still want to work out a shotgun. Watch this wonderful catch by uh, Rusty Williams. Mm, yeah. Damian lays around, watch Rusty right there, one hand, get the other one on it. Oh, yeah. Big play, because they had everyone covered, and that was just... Uh, a critical play. Rusty Williams plays a part. DeMontre plays a part. Fred, here's the option now. We ran a little option, too. Good first down on a six-yard run by Damian uh, Craig. And uh, we're, we're not a great option team, but if you can just do it well enough to keep people off balance, there's the field goal to make it 10-7 to 7 and get a lead that we would not uh, relinquish the entire evening. So important. Here comes the big turnover. Beautiful play. Beautiful. Knock the ball great there. And Jeff Dunlap. From Georgia, we have we have 24 players on our team from Georgia. Ryan Taylor from Jeff, from Dublin, Georgia, uh, big play, and they play hard. I'm Marcus telling you, Washington tipped it up in the air. Beautiful throw to the tight end. Uh, there, we just mixed some new stuff in. It was a great job. We put the tailback in motion. Damien throws a bullet to the tight end, and here's the sweep around. Watch Fred Beasley here. Boom! Boom. Pops it, takes him right Good to the guy. end zone and buries him. And uh, boy, he didn't get touched. And so, boy, out there, the team's excited. But like I was saying, for, for Georgia boys to be playing against Georgia, it means something because they have to go home to it, just like Auburn and Alabama. Look at that hit by Takeo Spikes on his high school teammate, Robert Edwards. Wow. They had a battle going all night. Takeo won most of them. <laughs> here's their quarterback. They put in the this guy now, my hat's off this. This is not the most versatile athlete in the conference. I don't know who is. Hines Ward is truly one of the great players. Larry Casher had some great plays. Boy, Larry Casher is going to be a fine football player. He had a great night, and the defense is just all over the field. And late in the game, we just ran out of gas. They were on the field too long. Nice play. Hicks for make another big catch. Critical first down right there. Another Georgia boy. Another Georgia from Marietta, Georgia. Uh, and did a good job. Watch Fred here. Watch him run over this back. back. Watch him throw him away. And just push it into the side. Gets a huge gain. And show him some of the things he can do. But I think with Fred and DeMontre, uh, you get a good combination back there. And Rusty Williams coming in. And Marquis sold, shoulder being sore. Uh, he, he fits in as he can. Fred bowling over for the touchdown. And Damien, I think Damien was totally out of control all night. <laughs> he was excited. He was totally out of control. But I don't mind it one bit. Because it was a, it's a sincere try. There's, I think our defense does the best job of using their eyes and, 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 and reading trick plays, reverses, and things of that nature. They play with their eyes. All the defensive coaching staff does a great job in getting our kids to play smart. Good and long. There's the pocket being pushed. Clinton Reese again getting his second sack on Bobo. They had not had turnovers. They had not had lost sacks. We really caused them into some problems there. And uh, Coach Oliver did an outstanding job. Uh, Pete Jenkins, Jack Hines, Joe Witt uh, 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 right there. Matt Wannabe with him. There's a great play. There. We let them score right before the half. They go down here and to catch it within 10. And this, this is what makes you upset. Just like last year, they scored to make it closer last year, but the difference this year. You're afraid they're going to come out with momentum at the that's half. Right. And then, then it's that's right. That's what happened. But the difference this year, we're a little bit stronger on defense. Offensively, we came out and scored two touchdowns. Instead of last year, we turned it over and missed a field goal. And so that was a difference, but it still made for an exciting football game. That's right. We didn't point out no turnovers in this game. That was... That well, was we had fun. six last week against Mississippi State. And you're not going to win when you have six. But we had zero, and that's how you win football games. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll get in the second half in a moment. Coach, uh, you come out to end the uh, second half and lose field position on a grounding penalty, and uh, that gives them an opportunity, but the defense comes back and holds. Well, for the fans, uh, when the quarterback's in the grasp of a defender, they're usually going to call grounding. Uh, uh, if you're outside, they won't. But uh, we, that gave a hurt field position badly, but the defense came back and held, and I believe they missed a field goal. Yeah, they missed, missed a field goal. That was a critical field missed field goal because the defense held it. There's no points. Offense come back and score twice. It's all a part of this game, and one that we won't forget. Let's move back into the game now, and uh, this is a critical part of this game because if Georgia ever scores and gets within three or so, it's a, it's a different kind well, of game. That's right. The, the football is a game of momentum. Well, what a great play. We were searching. They were doing some things defensively. We knew there was something on the backside we could throw, and so we got to a, a one, a, a 
trip formation threw back to Carson Bailey and, and Dane hit him right in the stride. Just, I mean, that just, what a huge play that was to deflate every time Georgia would come back. Now, they're, they're, they're forced to a one-dimensional game, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they have a great one-dimensional game if they have to do it. But there was a great play of, of, of um, Martavius Houston working through the blockers, allowing this to come in, getting some heat now, forcing the pile. All that because by uh, Takeo causing him to throw the ball on the ground, but great coverage there. And, uh, you know, after Georgia last year, I don't think I can ever relax in the fourth quarter. No, I can never no. relax with a lead. No. Boy, Fred just pounding his way in that, in, in that uh, up the field there. And we needed a first down here. We missed it by inches right here. We had about a third and two. A little bit. We got to go, go, go. And they couldn't quite break through that tackle. And they tackled him for no gain. That, that was a, a, a great play for Georgia. And it really could have been a factor. We could have put the, more time off the clock. Every time you get a first down when you're ahead, takes away a chance for a comeback. The freshman will learn down in this. Boy, look at that interception. Great interception there. Big return. I think that's his fifth of year, isn't it? Oh, he does a great job of being around the football. I tell you, Brad Ware from Georgia, another one of our Georgia guys. We have so many Georgia players. Uh, there's a nice little counter. Look at him run hard. Uh, run up, oh, I tell you, he's really giving us a little bit of spark uh, there. Yeah. Covering the ball so he doesn't fumble, and he's excited and, and excitable. And uh, hope and put some things in. Now, we'll put it in motion to throw the defense off. Watch that. And throw right back to Hicks Poor. Poor has a big play now. Uh, so instead of just running it every time, you mix the run with the pass. And, uh, and you really got him guessing a little bit, and that helps you a lot. Here comes Here's the, Damien. We had a little naked uh, fake, the, fake the sweep, the split back sweep. Came out with a, the naked reverse, and he saw an opening. Instead of throwing it, he ran it and uh, hadn't stopped running since. You notice nobody coming from the inside. They were all walled off. That's right. did a great job. It was really, really impressive. And uh, now the defense has got to hang on. And this is where's a great play to Hines Ward. Hines Ward. That, that guy, I'm glad he's graduating. I've seen too much of him. <laughs> But what happened is we've only got about 13 defensive players that are playing in the rotation. They're tired. They've been on the field a long time. And so Georgia, who rotates receivers and who rotates running backs, starts making plays. Huge drive here. They had a stop, and we got the ball. Really changed field position down here. Carson Bailey did a great job uh, uh, catching that ball and making something happen. But we have to punt, but we back them up real nicely to make them drive the length of the field. And uh, although they did some great drives late in the game, this is a punt return by... Uh, by this young man. He did a great job. He made a big pass reception, a big punt return. That hurt us there because it got them back on our side of the ball. I'd forgotten that was a series mm -hmm. where they had the good punt return. Kicking game is, is so important in field position. <coughs> They've still got to score three Oh, times. look at Hines. Now, we had him so covered, and he makes a great throw and catch. And Go and for two, score. and they make it, and they get it within ten. Well, here's a... Now, watch Fred Beasley. Well, I mean, you think of the watch. That's Fred Beasley right there jumping up and making the onside. We try to put some of our most experienced athletes in a position, and Fred jumps over there and makes as big a reception as he's had. This drive is a thing Watch this little beauty. run. Nice little run there. He gets outside. Don't go out of bounds, but always go for the first down because that gives you three more plays. And he gets a first down there. And we were thinking about running the clock out, but all of a sudden the backs take off the line block. Fred Beasley pounds the linebacker there, and, and Damien gets all the way inside the 10-yard line. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, this is there. And what you do, you're demoralizing Georgia now. Is they need that they need the ball back. There's a good block there. Demontre powers in. Boy, everybody's just starting to click now. Mm. Everybody's starting to click. The offensive line. You see them there, and all their people did a great job. And here's that. There's Fred on the final score of the game with about with about a minute left. And uh, he gets up high. Boy, that's great. With a little, a little under a little over a minute left, we score and take it to 45. And, and now it's just a matter of time. They do score. 45 see, to 28. The they score on the last. This is the last play of the game. In fact, they didn't kick. They kick, didn't even kick the extra point. And uh, to make it a little closer. And I just wanted to go there and recognize our fans that were so vocal and so strong. It was. Just, it's just a wonderful experience. To Keo taking that dive. It's his last time ever to play in Sanford <laughs> Stadium. And and Damien uh, recognizing the fans. And uh, Damien broke the single season record, passing uh, uh, Pat Sullivan as the the leading. Uh, passer, single season passer in Auburn history, and I'm proud of Damon and all the players, and for him to have that award. Stan, Stan White got the single, the, he got an award, I remember, uh, against LSU in 93. I, I forget which one it was. I was glad for Stan, and now uh, to see Damon get another one, it's really nice. And he has five of the ten longest passing plays in the conference this year. It's remarkable. He throws a great deep ball, and uh, uh, Carson and, and uh, uh, Goodson and uh, Clifton have been recipients of them, but uh, anything that can happen, I'm proud for Damien. One other word on this series. I, I, in, in, in many ways, this is the most magical college series of, uh, that I know of. Well, I, I'm 3-0 and as a coach in, uh, in Athens and 0-1-1 oh, one one here. Coach Dye was a winner in Athens and tied here. Coach Dooley over there is a winning at Auburn. It's, a, it's, it's got an unusual trend to it. 
We're going to break that next year, though, I think. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just a minute to talk about the next game. The Tigers are 8-2 and two going to the final game of the regular season, uh, the fourth time Alabama has come to Jordan Hare, Coach. Well, I mean, it's it's always the game. And uh, uh, Alabama comes in, you can throw the records out and, uh, uh, and every other stat out because it, it is one that has been down the wire every year. And uh, it's just an incredible game. We've got to play great offense. I remember in 84, Alabama had a bad year and they came back and won that oh, game. Oh, I mean, the, season. they're not going to have a bad game next week. We can throw that one out. Throw yeah. out all the people say their, their, their seasons were gone. It's not. This is, the, this is their season. They can overcome everything that happened by beating Auburn. We've got to play great defense. We've got to rally around the loss of Jimmy Brumbaugh and rise above. Offense, we've got to continue to run and pass, and the kicking game's got to be perfect in the field position. We'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by Gus Meyer, Brookwood Village, Birmingham. Freddie Kitchens, the screen pass to Ed Sism. Martavius Houston knocks the ball loose. Auburn's Quentin Reese recovers the fumble. Two hours later at Tumor's Corner, Auburn fans were taunting the Tide's play calling by chanting, Pass, Bama, Pass. 21 seconds left in the game. Auburn's Jarrett Holmes from 39 yards out. It's good. Bama had one last chance after a kickoff return and a penalty put the ball on the Auburn 40-yard line. A.J. Diaz lines up for a 57-yard attempt, about 10 yards short, and the Tigers win at 18-17. Well, that'll be one for the for the record books. One, but that'll be one for the museum. Uh, that'll be our kick. Um, and uh, and maybe that's that's after it's over with. That's the most best kind of win for the tradition of the game. I, I, I thought Alabama would play their best game. If they had played games like that all year, um, we'd have been playing them for the probably the division. They just they they played defense. They uh, we couldn't get people off the secondary. The two corners we just prayed to be out and they weren't and they played outstanding and, and they bottled up our passing game and, and kept us out of tempo yeah, i probably needed to be in more involved in that situation uh, uh, again uh, you know if we execute and don't drop it it's not a bad call if you do drop it it is a bad call it's, uh, it's i'm not going to second guess that part of it uh, obviously we'd like to have the play over we'd run it try to run a little bit more time off the clock and try to punch the ball away and, and see what happens but uh, it wasn't the case. If we had a made the made the first down, you know, nobody would have been complaining. It was just, you know, it's just one of them things. You know, something freak. You don't see that happen uh, once in a lifetime. Uh, any doubt in your mind at all? Not at all. Hey, they gave me time to two out timeouts to simply visualize it going through. You know, been praying to God. God's blessed me with a wonderful talent to be able to out here, be out here and play college football. You know, and that that was a, a gorgeous moment. You know, and I remember for all time. So for the first time, the network production. Lot to the far side. Kitchens in the shotgun. Third and about eight. Kitchens off the pump fake. Rolls to the left. Going to throw out in the flat. And the receiver's hit and lost the ball. It's Auburn the fumble. Fumble. got the fumble Auburn on the lead. Auburn's, Auburn's got, got it. it. That's the Alabama 32 or 3. Ball at the left hash mark. There's the snap. The spot. Kick is away. Long enough. High enough. Kick. Good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! It's good! Home from 39 yards! It's good! It's good! A mob scene! I mean, I mean, we just, you got to look at everybody on this one. You got to look at everybody and just tell us it, it takes wins like that to make a great season. You're going to be with us. This is one of the years now, one of the games that puts you in that museum 
to put you in there with all the great games that Auburn's ever played. And yeah, I guess it's the ones that are most Im improbable, where a team that's a champion comes back and proves they can do it. Everybody, that nobody quits, everybody believes they're going to find a way, and it comes back and helps. The fumble recovery, we kept missing things, and boom, you never gave up. And uh, this one's special. This one's special. I've got a game ball, but I've got somebody special here. we got somebody that's going to, that had his last game with us, and he's been here for every game of Coach Dot, every game of me, and that's Ralph Cottingham. Ralph. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it ain't over now. Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about a t you talk about Tennessee for the SC championship. You're talking about Alliance Bowl. You're talking about Alliance Bowl now. I mean, baby, baby, that's what you played. That's what you came to Auburn for. That's what you came to Auburn for. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. 1817 over Alabama. Coach, I like the uh, museum game thing <laughs> you use there. I suspect that it won't be long before when you walk into the complex, go into your office, you'll hear filtering through the halls from the Jonathan B. Lovelace Museum, that game. Well, ever right? since we got that museum, it, every, anything that's important goes in the museum. It's one of the most important additions to our athletic program and to our university. Mm -hmm. And I think of that as being a museum game. I think of Jared Holmes now being a, a museum figure, along with all the other greats. And so that's a great credit to this team, this game, our fans, that this is one we all want to remember, and it will always be remembered because of our museum. I have one other question. Did Ralph catch the ball? You he threw? caught it. Perfect catch. And he's got a couple more games. He didn't want that to be the last game. He's got a couple of more games. Hopefully, he'll be with, be with us uh, at Auburn. Okay, let's go to the dressing room now and talk to those three guys who played such large roles in the last minute of that game last night. We saw him come out in a, a pass in formation, you know, we, and I figured that since it was that late in the game, the only, only pass they'll do is a screen play. I didn't think they'll put the ball deep or uh, risk getting an interception, you know, and then I just read the offensive line. You know, I just went up and just try to make the hardest hit I can, and I seen the ball pop out, and when Quinn Reese recovered, I know that we're going to have another chance to win the game. Martell, he, made a, he made a big, big hit on 33, I believe, and the ball was just there. It was just there for me to pick up. It was, it was mine to give away, you know what I'm saying? What ran through your mind when you got on it? What ran through my mind, we had to have it. We had to have it to win we the had game. A chance. Yeah. I just took the two timeouts to take the time and visualize what the ball was going. You know, I visualized it the whole time going right down the middle. You know, I prayed to God this whole game. You know, he's helped both teams, you know, and he was with me all night tonight. You know, and it, you, it can't get any better than this. How did you, how did you stay calm? What, just visualize it all right? Yeah, uh, like I said, put the faith in the Lord, and he's helped me out this whole year. And, you know, it might not mean much, but they did the same thing to me in the A-Day game last year. They froze me twice. I thought about it and said, hey, same thing, just a few more people. Put it right down the middle. <laughs> of the game now. Coach, that was a museum quality tiger walk, I'll tell you. I, 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 don't, I wasn't here 89. They say that was a tiger walk of all tiger walks. But this one was, a, a, there was nothing like this that we've had a part of at Auburn. Tiger walk was bigger, wider, tighter. It was just the most incredible tiger walk. Our fans, I'm just so, it's such an event at Auburn and uh, to be a part of it, I can, you can't explain it to not Auburn people. The fans were, and the, and the aura, the aura around the field. You walked on that field and the whole the orange and blue uh, shakers, it's different. It only, it's only like that a, a few times. Stop them on their first possession, and here comes Auburn's first possession. Well, we came out ready to play. We moved the ball right down. The defense stopped them. We, we moved the ball right on the field, but we did not get in the end zone. We kicked field goals. So instead of being up 14 nothing like Georgia, where it might be enough to put the whole damper on all Alabama's spirit, they hold us two field goals. And I'm going to tell you, all that junk you read about them not being healthy and them not playing good, we were just being set up. We were being set up so if we won, we beat nobody, and if we lost, we were terrible. So don't ever let ourselves get caught up in that kind of uh, uh, trickery because that's all it was. We beat an outstanding team that probably could have beat almost every team in the conference if they played like they did uh, last night. That play could have turned into a uh, big score. And in fact, in fact, you had opportunities in the first quarter to really take control of the game. We and sure did. And, 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 and that's kind of the team we've got. We're a team that we don't, if we, were, if we did all those things, we would never lose. 
Look, I'll tell you, Rusty Williams, I'm so proud of Rusty Williams, the game he has. He we, stayed with you, didn't we, he? We, we've talked about DeMontre Carter, and, and DeMontre's doing great, but Rusty is a very important part of a game against Georgia, against Alabama. Jared Holmes doing what he does best is make field goals. He's made 10 straight, and the game uh, started about like we want to accept field goals to a touchdown, but Alabama is Alabama because they, they do these things. They, they never gave up, made big plays. And first quarter was all Auburn, second quarter. They're all Alabama. All You're Alabama. Right. You're right. So with the turnover, Auburn fails to make uh, any use out of it uh, because uh, they turn the ball back to Alabama on this play. Well, there's a, there's a great interception there by Kevin Sigler, and uh, uh, boy, they made a great play. And, um, it was incredible. We have not blocked, probably protected as well as we have, uh, would like to this year. We'll get there, and we'll get better at that as we get older, but, uh, Kitchens, I always, all week I kept thinking, you know, Kitchens is going to be the guy to come in. So he's done too well against us. And for all the criticism he takes, he doesn't get ruffled ever in a big game. So they turn the turnover into points. And here comes an unfortunate thing. Well, perfect, so Dam play. Damien would have had probably 350 yards if we had, had not had the drops. We had some great catches, but Damien was really on most of the night. We just were, could not catch his balls. And uh, every time we had a, that's what scared me, every time we had a critical situation, we, we did not make the play. There's a field goal that we gave up uh, on that turnover, and we're down 10 to 6 at half. But remember, we've been down every game this year but one, and this was no different. Were you frustrated, though, at the half? I was because, well, I was worried because this is the Alabama playing of old. This is the defenses that we're used to seeing in Alabama, and they've got great running attacks. They've got the team that they expected to have, and we're seeing it. So we're beating a very, very good Alabama team this night. This is not Mississippi State. And we have to beat a very good team. And we'll be back in just a minute. You need to make something happen. You need to get something going quickly and uh, get a big sack and a five-yard penalty. Stop the They did. Not us. They got it going. And this is where it seemed a little bit distressful because we needed something to happen early, and it didn't happen. And they made the plays and broke seven minutes and about 60 yards and scored exactly and what they this wanted this is a third do. long yeah and they throw a great little swing to those backs their key players are the running backs so when they pass those running backs in the flats they're passing to outstanding athletes they've got three that, that just could play for everybody and conference. they use them so effectively in this game the speed they've got the speed and size is, is, is incredible these guys are, are so good and uh they, there's the touchdown there and you know, you began to worry here well, now. You know, people this say... This is a hole. This is a deep hole. They, 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 you think about losing. It came across my mind, but it didn't settle <laughs> in. And so what you got to do is find a way. And Damien was throwing so well. Look at that. Kevin McLeod, a tight end, making a big catch there. A 41-yard gain. It, it just... We sparked us. It was like, you're either going to do it now or you're going to lose this ball game. That's right. This is this is almost do or die. Do or die in the third series. Quarter. And from this point on, we were moving at every series. And here's Damien again making great plays. Damien threw one of his best nights. We didn't catch all of his footballs. Car big, big play by Carson Bailey there. Takes us down to 10. You'll see Rusty Williams now. We were going with as many veterans as we could go in this game. This is a veterans game. Mm -hmm. and here's Rusty breaking back and rolling back, making a great run down the two-yard line. He's been in a few of these games, as has the next guy. Watch 73 on this touchdown play. 73. 73 takes the linebacker, knocks him back, and thread right behind him for a big score there, and it was a great, great drive. And now we missed a two-point play where uh, we had a chance to, to go within a field goal, um, but we come back. Now, here they are attempting their Fourth quarter. Boy, I tell you, because the Keo hit him so hard, he had to throw it soft, and the receivers thought each other was going to catch the ball. We dropped enough of them now to make up for that, but offense is back on the ball. There's a fake. Damon rolls out. Great, great catch there by Carson Bailey. Another one there was pass interference. We declined it. Now we're moving the ball to midfield. We've got another drive going there. There's faking the sweep. Damien scrambles around, finds his tailback, Rusty Williams again for a big play down the 15, 14-yard line, and we've got the thing moving. We need to score a touchdown. We need a touchdown because we're five points down. We didn't get it. Jared Holmes kicks the field goal, and now we're within two points of the victory. But we missed that two-point play. We missed the touchdown drive. We, it keeps looking like we're not going to quite do enough, but nobody's quitting. Look at the defense. Stretch out this sweep. Run it down, run it down. Then uh, Ricky Neal, our senior, one of our permanent captains, along with Fred Beasley and Damian Craig. And here's the play. There's the fake. No, no, here's the play where they get to him. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, well, here's the fumble that we see. Everything seemed to just not happen. How could you not get that ball? But sometimes desperation 
and their quarterback had a desperate attempt to get that ball he back. He got it back some way. I don't, it's one of those strange things. One of those strange things there, and there's a big drive. But you hold them on third and three. Yes, and they, they have, have to punt. punt. They have to punt down two with about six minutes left. But they punt it to the one-yard line. The ball yeah. rolled to the one. Here's a third and eight from the two-yard line. Hicks poor had a five catches, a four or five catches, a big game for him. We had Goodson got hurt late. Here's uh, a third Kenton and three. Third and three, nice throw to Tyrone Goodson. He's playing with a lot of pain. Uh, big play, uh, big hit on the shoulder. He really couldn't play after that hit right there. He landed on his shoulder. This drive stalls, but the point is you, you get field position after you have to punt. Make no doubt about it. I'll second guess myself. You'll second guess. Third down, do you punt? Do you go for it? On fourth and 13, I say you punt. And what happened is we forced him to make some decisions. We had two timeouts. Well, what do they do? They, they totally destroy us. They get a first down running the football. Right. There's not enough timeouts now to stop the game. But we, we, we uh, hold him here. We call timeout. We know we're going to get the ball back with 30 seconds left or 40. Uh, but what happens is they make a play here, throw the, decide to throw the ball. The uh, catch is made, but look at Martavis. He's a big hit. Quentin Reese makes the recovery. And boy, don't you feel something here. Normally, that's a pretty safe throw. I mean, that's more like yeah, a screen, run. Yeah, screen is yeah. nothing right. A screen yeah. is just a run. Here's a play. We get down to Hicks Poor again and get to the 22. And now we've got about a third down, and we cannot afford third and ten. We, there's no timeouts left, so we go ahead and kick the field goal on third down. There was no question. It was right it was down, straight the down the middle. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. And again, I just can't say enough about our fans, our band, uh, uh, the players, uh, and what this means to, these, to this team. You know. But it ain't over. It ain't over. There's a 57-yarder. <laughs> we got to see fall short. I didn't think he'd have a chance, but well, what a, you know, the Alabama game is so important. You understand? With us beating Alabama, I think for a year, our trustees, our president, our university can now go about the business of, of, of helping Auburn do the real things, including education, faculty salaries, budgets. We can, once you beat them, you don't worry about all the little things. You go take care of what the university needs to worry about. That's kind of why this game is so big, because Auburn has some other things we need to take care of this year. We're going to have fun with this game and then go make Auburn a better place in all the other areas. A final comment or two when we return. Listen up, people. Okay, the Tigers will take a few days off now, Coach? Yes, the uh, school is out all week. We're going to go home, uh, come back Friday at 4 o'clock, try to get a couple of days in against Tennessee. They will have to play against Vanderbilt. We'll not get those days, so we'll have a little bit of a plan ready. Uh, this late in the season, rest is probably better than anything else because you can over-prepare. Uh, and then that game will determine what we do after that. So Tennessee, an outstanding team. Uh, we're a team, no one. They picked us, I think, third in the division preseason. So this, mm -hmm. everything we're doing from here on out is beyond expectation. Uh, I'd like to remind you folks now, when you're going to Atlanta, you need to uh, get these win pins and uh, be uh, fully clothed and official when you go to uh, root the Tigers on in the SEC championship game. Now, uh, there is, uh, there is, there will be information on tickets uh, put out by the uh, Auburn ticket office in the next few days uh, so that uh, you need to pay attention to the media and uh, they, you'll get your instructions on how you may order tickets uh, to this SEC championship game. Coach, are you going to take any time off? We're going to go to Tallahassee for Thanksgiving. My mom and dad, they had a tough loss. Uh, I never mourned that one and visit with them and uh, maybe fish one day. But the uh, season's not over yet. I, I've got enough energy and excitement right now that we've got a lot of things out there that could even be better for this Auburn football team. And uh, Tommy had a big win, so I know you... Family's two out of three, and my dad, he, he, he's too old to, to panic completely to worry about that. <laughs> okay. And we've enjoyed you this year, and we'll be back next year with another round of these Auburn football reviews. Thank you for joining us. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by Gus Mike.